left, right. You are about to watch or listen to four hours of election coverage on November 3rd, Election Day 2020. Uh, if you're not prepared for that, I fully understand. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, you can back out now. Otherwise, good luck to you and uh, good luck to the country. This is Sip Talk. Grab a drink and enjoy. Cheers. 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 Welcome to episode 51 of SIP Talk. We're going to be doing some live election coverage as much as we can. A lot of the polls are still open. So it's about 8.15 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, James, what, what time are the polls open in South Carolina? I don't know because I voted early. Uh, my guess, so I drove to work this morning at uh, like 7.30, 7.45, and as I was driving by a couple polling places, it looked like they were just getting set up, so my guess would be 8. Okay, yeah. In New York, they close at 9. I have one that's within two blocks of the apartment, so... I think, oh, are you saying what time do they open or close? I'm sorry, I meant, I meant close. Oh, yeah, um, close, my guess would also be 9. Okay, well, I'm, uh, because it is an election year, uh, Democrats, Republicans, I'm drinking a red beverage. This is a beer I just got turned on to. It's called Einstock. Ooh, uh, it's really bad. They have, they have a huge range. It's Icelandic. This is a winter ale. So it's probably it's, pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy, almost kind of malty, uh, but, but really, really, all their beers, incredible beers, so I've been drinking this one, we've been getting set up, but I shortly plan to make a blue drink. So we'll see how that- What are you that gonna goes. make? Uh, you'll see, you, let me know if you can guess it. Also, I'm in the kitchen. Uh, I did my best to recreate my tequila bar, given that I'm about 60% packed. So I resurrected some skulls and some other, uh, other tequila-y things. And I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that that's authentic as, as I can get. Uh, so you did an early vote. I've never done an early vote. How did you do that? Well, they've, they had early voting locations all around the city. And my thought was that the, with, with turnout being higher this year, that the election day would have been a nightmare to try and wait in line. Mm -hmm. It turns out that it seems like actually it was pretty light in that because they had so many more polling places that I would have been better off voting today because it took me about 40 minutes in line on Friday. But I just went to a, an early voting location and then, you know, stood in line, gave them my ID. And they're like, all right, here's your ballot. Go do your thing. You had to give an ID? Yeah. Oh, there was no ID on my end. Um, I think the, the identification requirement is seen as, in some states, as uh, voter suppression. Mm -hmm. and they, they fight against the ID law, uh, which I think is wild. I think we need a – and I'm surprised it didn't happen last time – but a huge vote reform bill. And obviously the problem is, is that you have people clashing and they're trying to suppress, for the most part, others' votes. Um, surprisingly, the one, the, one thing, the one thing that I saw that I thought was a bit insane was an ad online that said, on election day, stay home, stay safe. Uh, I, and I, and I oddly just heard about it on the radio and the people that's, putting it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, the people putting, because if you think about it, right now, the economy is a big, bigger Republican issue than it is a Democratic issue, and safety and health is a bigger uh, Democratic and, and liberal issue than the economy. And just, you know, if you look at it, Trump is doing everything he can to keep the economy running, and then you have Biden that's saying, all this stuff that you're doing for the economy, you just need to shut it down, you should have shut it down. Um, so I'm, I'm curious if Biden does get elected, what he's going to change. Although at that point, it's, you know, two months after this anyways. Yeah. Um, so a week and a half ago, or yeah, a week and a half ago when I was in California, um, I was talking with my brother about different permutations of the election. And one thing that my brother said that I, I largely agree with is like, 
even if Biden wins, Trump's still going to be president for two months. And so <laughs> to, to, to throw, to, to paraphrase my brother's language, he says, I see a scenario where Trump acts something like a caged chimpanzee, just throwing <laughs> poo everywhere. Because let, let's be real here, regardless of whether you're a Trump voter or a Biden voter, do you think Trump's going to handle a loss well? I, I don't think so. So, yeah, exactly. Um, so, look, because we're just getting started, I want to get uh, started with the drink because I wasn't planning to drink beer. I just came in a red can. Yeah. And uh, I figured I'd, I'd start with that. Um, so I'm going to start with a cocktail. Uh, so, see, can you grab me a uh, margarita glass? I've got some – you can see my setup from where you are? Yeah, so I'm seeing bitters limes i'm guessing an orange uh yeah i got an orange over here um and uh oh boy i'm running long glass can i do a uh, one of the crystal glasses the thick ones the short one. short one so i'm gonna make two drinks right now i'm gonna do uh an old-fashioned first and if you guys are listening to this after the fact, so if you're, you're listening on an audio podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, something like that, you're really missing out on the visual here. If you guys are live or you're watching on YouTube after the fact, you're going to get some cool visuals. Uh, I'm going to start off with an old-fashioned. James, you can critique the hell out of me, but here's what I like to do with an old-fashioned. Um, I start with uh, some nice sugar cubes. I'm going to throw one in there. Okay. I'm going to do, uh, maybe overdo it a little bit on the bitters here. All right. I've got four or five, uh, I don't know what you want. Drops, to dashes. Yeah, and then I'm just going to put in some tepid water here. A little bit. Uh, so can I get the masher over there? So the, the first thing that I would do differently is I, I wouldn't add the water first. And I'm also going to pull out some ice just to let the ice warm up so it doesn't crack in half when it, um, when it goes into the drink. And I'm just going to muddle up. Let me see. I'll do it back here. You can see. Uh, just kind of crack down this, uh, this ice. I'm sorry. The, uh, the sugar cube there. Mix. And then I'm going to hit the bourbon. It's a favorite of mine, Evan Williams. Evan Williams is a really solid pick for the price. I, I completely agree. Um, and then got a little heavy on the Evan Williams. I'll, I'll show you here what I'm working with. So about a half a half a glass there. Yeah, I think you 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 went a little too heavy on the. Uh... Oh, it's a big cup. It's a big cup. Yeah. I'm not saving expenses here. And it looks like that's about a three and a half or four ounce pour. And based on your sugar cube and bitters setup, you're looking at, I would say you want to go two to two and a quarter. I felt that went heavy on the bitters, and I don't like a sweet old fashioned. So the heavy on the bitters allows me to go a little higher in the, uh, on the whiskey. All right, that's in there. I'm going to drop in the ice cube. The only problem is it doesn't chill that well, but I only put a drop of uh, room temperature water. So... It's not, you know, you're just getting room temperature at Williams. But I think the real key in an old fashioned is getting a good water to whiskey mix. Um, and I prefer bourbon when it comes to old fashioned. Now I got the Luxardo cherries, best cherries in the world. These cherries are not like your maraschino cherry. Well, they're, they're, no, those are actual maraschino cherries. Exactly. This is a Luxardo cherry and it comes in a super viscous uh well that's how maraschino cherries got their name is that cherries originally would to be to ship like cherries would spoil very quickly and so it was hard for people to ship cherries overseas before refrigeration so they had to store them they had to put them in some kind of a liquid and so what they used was maraschino liqueur so they would ship uh, cherries in vats of maraschino liqueur and so that's how maraschino cherries got their name was for the liquid that they were shipped in. And now they come in sugar water. Right, yeah. Okay. But, the, yeah, maraschino liqueur and maraschino cherries, uh, it's not that the liqueur got its name from the cherries. The cherries got the name from the liqueur. 
Yeah, and same thing with Luxardo, though. Luxardo comes in. Luxardo is a type of cherry liqueur. Am I, it, it is cherry liqueur, right? Luxardo is a maraschino liqueur. It, it, like Luxardo is basically oh. <laughs> what they ship the cherries in. Uh, okay. I got that in there, and my uh, my spoon's got a little of the Luxardo syrup on it, so I like to just mix it up. I feel, like you said, I don't think there's enough sugar, so this adds a little bit more sweetness, but a bit of a deeper flavor. I mean, there's not much in here at all. And it's gonna cool up the drink. And then, let's see what I got. Got a nice orange here, I'm just gonna rinse it and uh, dry it real quick. So one thing that I like to do with, with my old fashioned is I like to actually, with the, uh, the orange peel, I actually like to, to muddle the orange peel in with the sugar a little bit to release some of the oils from the peel. So I'm gonna show you when it comes to releasing the oils from the peel. Well, I pull that off, I'm gonna do my absolute best. Nice thing about being in my own kitchen is, you know, given normally when I'm not packing, everything is, is right here. When's so, the move, by the way? Uh, it's still pending. So I like to, uh, if you guys are watching, you're in for a treat. Let's see what we got on uh, TikTok, what we got on Instagram. All right, thank you guys for being here. Uh, so this is how I like to make it old fashioned, and this is a pretty cool twist. You take your uh, orange peel here, take a little lighter, and just let it sit there for a second, let it warm it up, and then boom. And uh, I'm gonna spin that. Yeah, that's a fun showy way to do it. A showy way to do it. You're burning off a lot of this stuff, so what, then what I like to do is just kind of take the orange rind and kind of crack it over the edge here, wipe it around. You gotta be careful not to burn the orange rind that much. And, uh, I think that, that one's pretty damn good, actually. I drink a lot of old fashions. All right, batter up. And so the uh, only thing that I would change with the with your drink would be I would add the or, the water as the last step. Yeah, I just like it to muddle with the, um, you know, with the with the sugar and the uh, what do you call it, the bitters. So I just traded that out for a taco. So I'm not drinking old fashions tonight. I'm drinking a blue margarita. And let, let me take a bite of this and I'll get started on that blue margarita. What are you drinking, by the way? I am, I'm going with the usual Milwaukee's best ice because um, I haven't gone shopping for liquor in some time. Uh, I had the, the Johnny Walker Red did not last very long, so that, that bottle is already toast. Mm -hmm. And um, I went out last night with a buddy from my bartending days and ended up having way too much last night. So I'm not in a heavy drinking mood tonight. Although depending on which direction the election goes, uh, that might change. Exactly. So I, uh, I like to make things to taste. I'm definitely, I don't work in a restaurant, so I'm not worried about using too much of one thing or too much of another. I can always top it off, level it out. But I'm gonna start with a shaker. Hold on, so can I guess the recipe before you do it? If yeah, you guess, I, I'm guessing you're gonna got. go with the, I'm gonna, you're gonna go with the classic margarita recipe, and you're gonna sub out triple sec for blue curacao. How brilliant! You got it. Are um, you gonna go with the classic three two one ratio? Um, I don't know what that is, but it's gonna be a lot of tequila. So the the classic ratio, which I think you generally actually want to ignore but is three parts lime juice two parts tequila one part triple sec it leads to a pretty sour drink yeah um so what i usually do is if i go with the three two one i'll add a little bit of water and i probably up the ratio on the triple sec slightly okay well here's what i'm going to do and you can watch you can critique but i'm going to open the tequila i had it in the freezer since i, I came home so is there ice in the shaker no, uh, I'm gonna put ice in a second once I No, make. ice first. But it's gonna, we're gonna dilute it here. No, ice first. Trust me, ice always goes in first because if you're dropping ice into the shaker, if you've got a fair amount of liquid in there, then the, the ice can end up splashing the liquor out of the cocktail shaker. Oh, and God forbid we lose any liquor. So, I got some uh, Espelon tequila. I just really like it because the artwork on the bottle is really cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was a really popular liquor when, when I was at the bar. We a lot of people like doing shots of that. So I'm gonna put in some of this, like a little, and then I'm gonna put in a little less. 
Oh, this this was cheap. This was like twelve bucks. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, um, blue Carousel is not an expensive one. All right. I'm guessing that's forty proof. Uh, probably less. Thirty proof. That's close. Yeah. Um, and I like to do a little bit of sugar. Alright, and then uh, for those of you who don't work in the food and beverage industry, you may not be familiar with these. It's a lime squeezer. I saw one of these things at a bar for the first time, and immediately the following day I went I went out and bought one. They're these, great. These things are awesome. You get the absolute maximum amount of lime lime juice out of uh, out of any lime. I have one for lemons and I have one for uh, oranges. And I'm just going to roll the limes quick, real first. Uh, and uh, juicing them up a little bit. I don't know if that's a, a verb, juicing them. All right, and let me grab this knife, slice them right down the middle. I'm really hoping this drink works out well, but who the hell knows? So I'm doing two, uh, two limes, and then I want to demonstrate this, because this, I mean, this is relatively new to me in the last seven, eight years, but your lime goes in here, not like this, which it would look like it would go in, but like this. And you're just going to squeeze. Juice so I like those for quick juicing, but I like the traditional stand hand, um, juice press for doing larger volumes. Well, if you have the space for it. I store mine on top of my fridge. Okay. Well, all right. But for a quick drink like what you're doing, those are a great tool. I'm going to pull out a, an ice cube while I shake this. All right. And we, I don't, definitely don't think we need any water on this one. Um, and then I got a nice, nice cold glass. Throw this on top. And ice cubes. I'm a huge margarita fan. I would say it's definitely my favorite drink, even though I I think I get the most joy out of drinking margaritas, uh, but you know, I always like uh, like a paper plane or a Negroni. There's lots of drinks I think are much more complex, but for some reason, a margarita is a simple drink to make. They're just great drinks. Uh, I have these great spherical ice molds. I'll give you a tip on those. It's a round spherical ice piece of ice, but you don't drop it in the glass. You take them both and you tip it in. Otherwise, you will break the glass. I had a beautiful set of glasses, and first ice cube I went to drop in there, I uh, shattered the glass. So, Can I get this strainer, if you don't mind? The flat one, strainer, not the cone. That one, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, strain this out into my cup, and wow, that is blue. Yeah, blue right. curacao, I'll do that for you. Um, yeah, I'm gonna stick with this just like this. Uh, cheers to your uh, Milwaukee's best. Cheers yeah, to you guys that are watching, we got a few on. Uh, Salt or no, if, if I had a better salt set up, I would definitely add salt. Um, love those other issues. Let me just hit some comments real quick, and then I want to really get into this election. Um, yeah, well, I'm interested to hear what the comments are. Yeah, well, I've been doing that backwards. We're making uh, margaritas. Uh, hello from Kentucky. Who knows how to vote? Which way is Kentucky going? Um, probably Trump. I don't know. Okay, well, Andy, Sam. Uh, I'm guessing you're a Trump supporter. Uh, all right, that's really what we got. I'm missing a lot of these because like the setup I have at home, I can't really see much of what you guys are saying. So, but keep commenting. I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to read. Oh, candy, Sam, red. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, I started with a red drink. Margaritas are definitely my favorite. Uh, Kentucky went Trump. Kentucky still going, right? Kentucky is at 74% reported and it's 6137 Trump. 6137 at what? 40? At 74% reporting. So oh. Kentucky's pretty heavy for Trump right now. And are we talking in person? 
What do you mean in person? Well, how are, I'm really curious how they're recording these votes. Um, I see North Carolina coming in. That looks 71% Trump. Oh, they're, going, they're going no. county by county. Never mind. Going county by so county. I'm looking at a live election map um, provided by the AP. I've got 51% of North Carolina in, and Biden's up 54, 45. It's, it's still super early, um, but let's hit the comments and- I right know we hit some comments. Uh, Ola desde Colombia, Virginia, Kentucky went from, yeah, it sounds like they already did. Hey, Chicago, uh, sorry, I'm missing you guys on Instagram. It's my bad, it's the setup we have here, we're blocking that. Um, so you voted, did you vote, uh, you vote the previous election, 2016? No, I sat out 2016. Really? Yeah, fair enough. You never much of a Hillary fan. Oh, no, I did not like her very much. I disliked Trump more, but I also live in South Carolina, so I felt like my vote didn't matter one bit. Yeah, no. And, I mean, and it wouldn't have, so. Well, uh, the county that you're in typically is a Democratic county, right? Um, just recently. It, um, we used to have a Republican uh, congressman who was Mark Sanford, he got primaried from the right in 2018. And so they had a very strongly Trump supporting candidate for the Republicans and a relative, the new face, definitely a political newcomer in Joe Cunningham who ran against her. I don't remember the, the lady's name who, who lost to him, but he flipped the, the Charleston area seat for Congress that had been Republican for quite some time. So that's just recent. He's pretty likely to win re-election. Um, people down here generally like him. He seems like a decent dude. But um, this state's still pretty heavily Republican. Although right now with the, re the vote reporting in only 12% and it's 52 to 46 Trump. Um, I'll be interested to see how our Senate race goes. That's one of the most watched in the country. It's also the most expensive Senate rate in history. Where is Lindsey both, Graham spending that much money? Um, Lindsey Graham, not so much. The Democratic candidate Jamie Harrison has raised a crap load of money, like a hundred million dollars for a Senate race kind of money. Um, I I think that it's still a long shot for him to win, but you you actually think it's a long shot? Yes. Okay. Um, can, you, can you just because not everybody who's who's watching and listening knows about this guy? Um, I'm really curious your take because my thinking is South Carolina has Carolina. So heavily plantation based. How many years ago? A hundred years ago? Yeah. R roughly. Uh, Yo, the apartment complex I lived in until very recently had the word plantation in its name. Which we joked about how, yeah. Well, yeah. I always thought like, how do you even do the marketing if you've got plantation in your name? How do you do the marketing to, to, to black people? Like, hey, come with plantation style living. That you'd see that on some places. They'd advertise plantation style living. Like, if I'm a black person, the last thing I want is plantation style living. Yeah. Like, you're telling I, me, oh, here, here's another bonus. You can work where you live. <laughs> um, yeah, you get a rent reduction, maybe. Yeah. Um, but my experience in South Carolina that the demographics are um, majority white, but uh, a large minority black. And Lindsey Graham has done some crazy, uh, he's, he's either loved or hated, but I feel like there's an increasing number of white people that don't like him. And I feel like you have a lot of black people that are, are likely to vote um for the for the other guys running remind me his name again jamie harrison um i don't we know all about that much him a, about him we talked but, about him in a previous podcast i've heard some of his uh i've heard some talking points of his i can't remember off the top of my head now i obviously i don't follow south carolina politics too much but no. it sounded like he had some some good stuff to say yeah and it's tough to get behind lindsey graham especially after the supreme court uh pick and you know yeah the sound bites that he got caught. So Lindsey Graham has kind of, he, he's burned bridges on both sides because he had a lot of support, let's say four or five years ago, because some of the more conservative Democrats and independents had some respect for him because of 
his ability to work across the aisle. And since, since Trump's election, he's lost a lot of that support of the people that don't like Trump that would have supported him because he at least was willing to work with the opposing party. And since his support of Trump has gotten so strong, he's lost, he's lost the people on the left that might have gravitated towards him. But at the same time, he's lost some people on the right because of his criticisms of Trump at times. So he oh, hasn't, really? re- yeah, he's kind of, he hasn't been holding consistent policy positions on, on a lot of things. And so he's kind of tried to play the middle and, and really lost both ways. Um, Cause a lot of Trump supporters still hold against him. The comments that he made back in 2016, calling him a kook and totally unfit for president. Um, which, I mean, yeah, sure. But um, this is the year, if there's ever going to be a chance to unseat Graham, I think this is the year. Um, I, I still don't think that it's all that likely. What I'm frustrated with right now is that my favorite website for, so there's all the polling and there's websites like 538 that do forecasting based on polling and models. Mm-hmm. And there's certainly value in that, but as we know, th- those forecasts are kind of finicky. And well, as we polls, know, 2016. Very much so. Yeah. So what I found I like a lot more is political futures markets. And well, these are kind of like stocks, but basically but they'll have people, contracts. They're, they're people putting money on the line based on the election. They're not, pe- they're not exit polls. Um, no, they're not polls running up to an election where people this is people have- putting real money on the line based on the results of a political event. I think and somebody so- in, in England put uh, five million, just an actual bet on Trump winning. I could be wrong. Yeah. So in, in countries where you have kind of state sponsored gambling, like England, where you can just walk into a bookie and make a bet, like a lot of bookies will have the ability to make bets on this but political futures are a little bit different and the basic idea is that you have all these contracts that'll pay a dollar if the event succeeds so if you have biden to win and and biden actually wins that a contract will pay a dollar and so all the contracts trade somewhere between zero and a dollar and so the last check that i had if so right now biden is trading at about 68 cents now the problem is the website's super slow because it's getting a boatload of traffic right now mm-hmm. but i i i trust people when when they have real money on the line i trust them to make better decisions than when it's somebody just trying to make a forecast because they think it's interesting and even even people like nate silver whose job it is is to make forecasts and everything like that if he gets it wrong he's not losing any money but the people on these political future sites if they get it wrong they are losing money mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I follow the political futures markets much more closely. And I actually thought about placing a bet on it today. But by the time I thought about doing it, the website had slowed down so much that it wouldn't have been feasible. Not placing I look at it as for making a stock move. Am I correct? Yeah. I, the way I look not at a, it is not a traditional bet. Huh? Not well, a it's, traditional it, bet. No, because you can also, yeah, it's much more like a stock market because let's say you buy a Biden contract back when Biden was trading at 30 cents during the primaries or whatever. Well, the Biden contract's now trading at 68. So you could sell the contract early and make your 38 cents per share and get out. And even if Biden loses, you still made money because you just made money on the contract moving. You didn't even need to have the event go. You can buy the contract low and sell it high. And or you can ride the contract out to expiration and hope that the event happens your way. Um, but like Nate Silver right now has hit has 538's forecast somewhere between 90 to 95 percent Biden and political futures markets have it at 68 to 43 Trump. Uh, I'm sorry, 68 to 43 in favor of Biden. And I know those numbers add up to more than 100. And the reason for that is the negative arbitrage in the contracts. OK if I need to explain what that is. Yeah, you do. <laughs> okay. So contracts, all the contracts are going to have a bid ask where somebody is offering to buy a contract for one amount and somebody is asking for the contract at a different amount. And the contracts are not, uh, the, the Biden contract and the Trump contract are not traded like linked. They're, they're, they're mutually exclusive. And so 
you can basically if you if you were to have the contracts trading dead at some sum of 100 so let's say it's biden 50 trump 50 that's mm-hmm. going to be like a tr- you, you could basically buy both contracts and then not lose any money okay if they're if they add up to a hundred. And yeah. so let's say that they add up to less than a hundred. Let's say it's Biden at 40 and Trump at 40. Well, now those two contracts trade at 80 cents. If there's only two candidates in the race, you can buy both contracts for 80 cents. And one of those contracts is going to pay a dollar. So that's positive arbitrage because you're able to buy something that when it's all aggregated together has more value um, net. And so negative arbitrage, what you generally see is, uh, in markets where the sum of the two things is going to cost you more than the total probability of the event playing out. Okay. I, I guess that makes a little more sense. How, how are you watching results? Because I can't, I, I have no, so I, I I've got on my second that. screen, oh. I've got like four different windows open right now. Um, and so, the, the main one that I'm using is the AP. Um, and I might just go to their main website and take a look at, see if I can find just their live election map in a bigger format, but come on. Well, you know, yeah, I'd like to, as some results come in, I'd like to, I'd like to announce some of the results. That way, if anybody's watching, we can kind of. Yeah, I'm trying to find a good map that kind of constantly updates. The one that I have does constantly update it just takes its it's just i have to like scroll over everything no, definitely uh I'm, I'm but just, sure. i don't have much you know i'm not I'm used to my office where i got a 16 inch screen a giant 27 inch screen another 4 inch screen next to my face um here we're working at 24 inches and i'm surrounded by tacos so mm-hmm. I, I can't i can't quite follow uh follow the results but what i do want to say is if you guys are watching us live now, thank you for watching us, but please don't forget to hit YouTube or hit Apple Podcasts or hit Spotify or hit Anchor and to follow us and, uh, and write us if you don't mind. Uh, All right, I've got, a, I've got a good website. Right. And for the people out there, 270 to win is um, a good website. And that, that one's showing me more county county by county results okay so i just i'm looking at the comments now says biden has 91 electoral trump has 73 now when they're announcing the electoral um is that solid are those results solid Mm, looks like are we gonna fall short of the the they need 270 right are we gonna fall short of 270 tonight and we'll be counting into this week um i would say that right now neither the 90 or the 63 are particularly solid. Um, okay. All right. And if you guys are watching us live, I really hope that you have a drink in hand. It is election night. It's going to be a late night. Um, I feel like tonight's going to extend into tomorrow, potentially into the rest of the week. So uh, it's a good night to stay awake. Also, if you're in New York City, especially if you're in Manhattan, I actually predict some riots, and I, act, I, I have a feeling there's going to be like some fist fighting, some real violence in the streets. Um, I, I think if Biden wins, you're not going to see too much of it. Well, I, that's kind of what everybody's been saying, and the reason I believe is that if you look at the previous protests we've had over the course of the summer, mm-hmm. where um, it was a racial issue, and yeah. and it was a much more liberal issue. Uh, if Biden, um, if Biden loses, it's not just a racial issue. Mm, yeah, if Biden loses, I, I think that there's going to be a it's whole a bunch of problems. Issue. It's a racial issue because you know, Trump. Well, Biden's Biden support among among Black Americans is really high, like over. Well, then you 90%. also have, but you have everyone else getting jumping on a bandwagon. Uh, of protests. And as protests are happening, you're getting more and more, uh, and it's a, a lesser racial issue than what we had going on this summertime. Um, and then I, I have a feeling you're going to get, you know, people with their giant pickup trucks and things like that going out in the streets to defend our country. I don't know. I just, I, it's, uh, it's not going to be good. There's probably going to be, uh, 
there's going to be some problems before this all settles. But I mean, I, my office every single day, there's chanting or some type of protesting. Uh, I'm right off of Broadway, so I can hear everything that goes up and down Broadway in Midtown. Um, and, you know, that's like Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade type territory. So everything runs through there. And I hear it every single day. Um, so I can only imagine if that's happening on a regular daily basis, tomorrow, no matter what, there's going to be, there's going to be, you know, definitely some stuff going on. Um, yeah, let me pull up. I'm going to pull up YouTube and see if I can find any any of these live news that do, that do good election coverage, and I'll just have some mute. Yeah, I'm on Twitter. So uh, I, I'm I'm being fed tacos here, and yeah. So I got NBC News live stream. I got like five or six different things tracking this right now. Um, but uh. I'm gonna hit the Cholula right here. I got Cholula is good. You uh, you uh, you have Valentina there? No Valentina. I prefer Dude, Cholula. Valentina, is so Valentina. Good. Valentina doesn't have the range of flavors. Valentina is Valentina, which is really similar to a Frank's Red Hot. Great hot sauces. It's Mexican Red Hot, basically. But yeah, it is, and and really great hot sauces. Uh, Cholula. Has, this is a chili garlic, which is definitely. I mean, I would you know if I could get if I had a shot glass. I'd probably do a shot of this stuff right now, actually. Mm. Why not? I think this is really some of the best hot sauce. I've never had the chili, uh, the chili garlic cholula. We got a sweet habanero, um, and that's I could eat, I could, I could drink the bottle. Like, Oof. it's, it's, and it's not too spicy. Even the habanero is not too spicy. Um, mm. that's good. So yeah, right now North Carolina, they're saying it's too early to call. They're yeah, calling, I, think, I think everything's going to be too early to call because we're still – I think there's so many early votes, mail-in ballots. Yeah, uh, but I think if you have an – if if the in-person voting that's reported tonight is strong enough one way or another, then all the early voting and absentee ballots might not have might, – might not even matter all that much. I disagree. And uh, here's how I see it. If it's close, Trump is going to declare victory mm -hmm. um, within the next two hours. Uh, um, I'm thinking like 10, 10, 11 o'clock. What's that? Yeah, between like 11 and midnight. If it's really close, let's say it's within three points, yeah, I, could, I could see Trump trying to declare victory. But let's say that Biden – let's say that midnight comes and nationally Biden's up like five points. Mm. Electoral point. No, I'm talking five points, just percentage. I don't think that's. Right. I'm not talking about the electoral college. I'm just saying that let's say Biden's up five percent nationally. I don't think it's going to happen. I think um, I don't know how to. I think it's going to be if it's if it's a if it's pretty close split. Trump's going to declare victory. I think if it's close, um, but Biden's winning the popular, I still think Trump is going to declare victory. I don't. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. Um, so one of the ideas that I had for our talk tonight is obviously follow the election results as they're coming in and react accordingly, mm -hmm. but kind of as an interim discussion to well, kind of. Early. It's still early. Yeah. But as an interim discussion to just kind of go along with what's going on with the, the election is what, what do you want to happen and what do you think will happen within the next year? And let's, call, let's extend it out to the end of 2021. What do, you, like, what do you want to happen and then what do you think will happen? And I'm not talking so much personally. I'm talking more like what you want to have happen for this country or the world and what all you right, think well, will happen. All right. Well, you guys are live. What do you think is going to happen over 2021, depending on which party is elected? And what do you want to happen? Um, I don't want to get so much into what I want to happen, but I think if, if regard, regardless of which party wins, I think um, the coronavirus cry force is 
is going to back down a little bit. And by that, I mean the, the, the cry force. That, yes. Yeah. Everybody's crying over this coronavirus. So if you notice, we're tracking cases and not deaths. We're, we're tracking both. The media attention is on cases and not deaths. We're tracking both. You're right. But the attention is on the cases. And the deaths haven't really spiked that much. Well, there's a lag between when the cases spike and when the deaths spike. Sure, but we haven't had a huge death spike. But we probably will. But we've had spikes in cases. I mean, we have a current spike in cases. But I believe that's linked to the amount of testing. Are you, are you pulling up a death uh, chart? Yep. Okay. And... Um, please don't like more testing does not equal more cases. The I, cases uh, exist regardless of whether or not you do the testing. Okay. Okay. But we're, it's more cases reportable. Yeah. But just because we like, just because we're reporting the cases, like it doesn't mean that the cases weren't there. It's just be like, we weren't looking. Like, Sure. What the testing does is it reveals what's actually happening. But, if we so stop that, testing, it's not like the coronavirus is going to go away. But that's what I'm saying with the death rate. The death rate hasn't gone up that much because I, I really believe that okay. the case so is there all is there a way that I can do a screen share? You probably can. All right, let's see. Host know, has dis host disabled participant screen sharing. Awesome. Uh, well, you know, you know, you really uh, you know, you gotta know your role, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, apparently I don't. So, uh, let's see. Um, chat, make host, put in waiting room, rename. Uh, it's crazy that we're able to do this via Zoom. Like that's yeah. pretty cool. Because but... I've got, because I've got um, a really nice graph of at least South Carolina's cases per day and reported deaths per day, and yeah. I'm going to say that we're probably not going to be drastically different from the rest of the country. Obviously the numbers will be different, but I would say the trend of like, if we have more cases and we have more deaths, I would say that that translates pretty close to whatever else is happening in any other state of our number of cases to death ratio is going to be relatively comparable. And so I really want to show this graph to you. So right, you can I'm gonna see, make, I'm going to make you the host. Oh, all right. Right. Yeah, you, you, uh, make James Boswell the meeting host. Change host. Oh, yeah. Ooh, All right. Ooh. All right. I forfeit. Your screen. I forfeit All right. Power. Here we go. So, can you see my screen? Uh, no. We can't um, see your screen. Oh, let's try this now. I should probably actually All just right. click the share button. So, now you can see, right? Oyster shots with Ch Cholula Habanero. Rosh, that sounds okay. phenomenal. Oh, uh, that's. Uh, uh, fuck. Yo. Screen? Hang on. Hang on. That's, that's not good for me. Let me see if I can view options. Uh, Oh, shit. Uh, are, are you seeing the the, the graphs? All right, we're gonna make some we're gonna make some adjustments. All right, so let's. All right, go back. No, I, I, I'm making adjustments based off what you're showing me. So go go back to the screen record or screen share. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna back up. And uh, and what, so so show me what you got there. So you can see here. This is from the very start and the number of cases and you'll see that in june through august like june and july we had this really big spike where we went to like almost 2000 cases per day now what you'll see is that if you shift the it, you see that the spike in deaths happens slightly later but you can see that these two graphs share a really similar shape okay fair enough i i, I buy into that i buy so into now the deaths is going to have more volatility to it because and you'll see like you can see that the like the close fit line i'm going to try and zoom in a little bit if i can all right so you'll see that like each day there's some volatility or whatever but you see that the death volatility is much higher to the close fit line so like your r factor on on the deaths is going to be a much lower correlation but right. you can see that basically as cases spike a little bit later, deaths spike. As yeah, the roughly, cases drop, deaths drop. Roughly, now, roughly, it looks maybe like 10 days or so. Probably. 
which is about what you'd expect. Yeah, hit, hit, the, the regular, hit the regular screen real quick. Go back to regular screen. Stop the share. Yeah, let me. I just gotta reorganize this over here. No, that's fine. Um, but so, yeah, maybe the the reason why reporting deaths is not happening as much now. The the national death total is reported all the time, and the national death total is oh, like it's only giving me South Carolina, which is not ideal. But that's not your national death, but no, it's right. Um, but whatever the case is, like the deaths are more variable. So they're not reported because one, they lag the actual cases. And two, again, they're variable. Whereas the actual cases, you get real time data every single day and you either have a case or you don't. But like, just because we're testing more and finding more cases doesn't mean that like if we tested less, there would be less virus. I completely, yeah, well, that's, I think we're both, we're both in agreement with that. I was just saying you test more, you have, I mean, you, you, you're able to detect more virus, but it doesn't necessarily have any effect on whether or not there is. Yeah, when you first start off, you're like, well, we're testing more, so that's why we have more, we're virus numbers, like, well, yeah. But. Uh, numbers, that's why we have more reportable numbers. Yeah, but. Numbers, numbers are countable. Um, yeah, this, this thing's not just going to go away. It's gonna. It's probably actually going to continue to get worse until we change something markedly. Because as things get colder, people are going to be spending more time indoors. It's going to be harder to do the social distancing. And I don't know. I'm. I'm. Like, have I showed you the mask that I bought for myself? Uh, do you have it with you? I have it in right. in my hands right now. All right. Let's see it. And let's. Uh, this let's... is this is for the election night the for everybody. Giant, the mask says giant meteor. And it looks almost like uh, not, it says not Pillsbury. It, Who makes? Yeah, Pil it looks like a Pillsbury logo, actually. But Is yeah, so the mass says right? Giant Meteor 2020 and just ended already. <laughs> um, that yeah. I actually wrote in Giant Meteor for one of my local elections. I'm glad it was a local. <laughs> I um, probably would have written it in for the uh, like for the top line. I because my vote doesn't really matter in South Carolina for the presidential election. It did for the Senate and the uh, house, but I, I got some, I got some shit from my family. So I ended up voting um, for an actual candidate, but uh, yeah, giant meteor 2020. Um, that, that, that was my preferred candidate to win. I thought that he had a solid platform across the board. Um, Earth? What do you mean? This giant meteor. Yeah. Like, yeah, his his policy on healthcare, the economy, foreign policy, education, national debt. I thought we're all really solid. He really only had one glaring weakness in his in his platform. Not being human. No. Oh, not being American citizen. Oh uh, well, I, yeah, but uh, <laughs> I really think that the only policy problem that he had was his plan to protect Earth from the uh, giant meteor impact. Mm. But that was the basis of his platform right yeah uh he now what religion was he he was that spaghetti monster religion right giant meteor yeah uh giant meteor is non-denominational i was pretty sure he was that spaghetti monster religion it was a big one uh you know 15 years ago <laughs> um for those of you that don't know the spaghetti monster religion since i don't know anything i'll let james explain um i know a little bit about it after, um, after he wikipedia's uh yeah. It's basically, <laughs> it's, it promotes a lighthearted view of religion that opposes the teaching of intelligence design and creationism. It's basically a spoof religion. Exactly. Exactly. But that's why I thought the giant meteor could be, uh, could be maybe spaghetti monster religion. It goes to the spaghetti monster church. Um, mm -hmm. All right. How are we looking? How are we looking on results? Um, not much has changed from the comments. Um, Florida is going to be really close. So right now, 90% of the vote is in with Trump ahead about 350,000 votes. That's huge. Though. But there's 10% left to report and it's possible. I, I don't have a county by county breakdown of what Georgia looks like, but it's possible that like the metropolitan areas like Miami are probably the ones that are taking the longest to report. 
So okay, so higher higher populations, higher electoral count. But also, metropolitan areas tend to fa favor Democrats pretty heavily. So if if Florida is waiting on places like Miami to report, then it's still hard to say. And right now, Florida is not being called. So just going down the list of so right now, there, my map yeah, is yeah. showing. I got to run and grab something. Can you just uh, report the results real quick? Anybody who's watching, I'll be right back. Yeah, let me go through them. I'm going to go through the states that have been called the big ones. So right now, Biden's at 119 votes, uh, and Trump is at about 92. And we've got, for Trump, North Dakota, South Dakota, uh, Wyoming, New, uh, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, West Virginia, and South Carolina. For Biden, we got New York, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, Illinois, New Mexico. States that are still too close to call, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Ohio, North Carolina, Florida, Georgia, Missouri, Kansas, Colorado, and Texas. All the other states are going to be either not reported yet or too few data to be able to make any kind of projection whatsoever. North Carolina is interesting. Biden is up slightly at 77% reporting. We got 51 to 48 Biden. And Georgia, Georgia's only at 34%, but it's heavy Trump, 56 to 42. But that number is probably going to change quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I just saw someone flash on the TV screen, which I, I can't really see, but about Florida, and it looked like, it looked like Trump was in the lead there. Um, he is right now, yeah. Yeah. I... Uh, I actually, so what are your, what are you, what's your end prediction? So I think, first of all, the coronavirus is not going to be going away anytime soon. I think best case scenario is we have a vaccine by the end of the year. Um, I don't think that there's going to be large public acceptance of the vaccine initially. Well, uh, I heard, I think, hold, let me just pause you. I heard actually the vaccine is going to be there in a couple of weeks. Which and, is by the end of the and year. And the disease is just going to disappear before you know it. Uh, no. No, that's what I heard. Who told you that? Well, only the president of the United States, the greatest nation in the world. He said okay. it's just going to disappear. Okay. Um, so, moving on. <laughs> um, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so vaccine's going to be ready, best case scenario, before January. Now, it's going to be available in limited quantities, and I think largely because of Trump's heavy pressure to get a vaccine out quickly, there, he's, he's sowed a lot of public doubt about whether or not the vaccine has gone through all the proper testing that yeah, normal yeah, vaccines yeah, would go. Yeah, um, yeah. And so, like, I, for one, am oh. pro-vaccine. I think that everyone should get vaccinated unless you have like a health condition that makes it impossible for you to do so. It's just well, a socially responsible thing to do. You hear what's happening with polio right now. Uh, is it coming back? Major resurgence. Uh, India, a lot of uh, like Afghanistan, a lot of those. Uh, you know, well, well, yeah. Yeah. Polio is an example of what vaccines can do. We practically eliminated it. Smallpox, we have eliminated. Why? Because of vaccines. So I'm very much pro-vaccine. However, I will tell you right now that when a COVID vaccine comes out, I'm very unlikely to get it initially. I'm going to wait and see because I think that any trials that have been done have gone through quickly. And I think that if I'm injecting something into my body, I want it to have been tested pretty thoroughly. Well, you, you know, yeah, I, you're always telling me how your body is a temple and veganism uh no I, I i completely i completely agree it's 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 crazy you know I, I have a slight fear like deep down inside doesn't hit the surface very often that the coronavirus is actually something much more malicious um than just a slight respiratory issue i think we don't know the long-term effects on it uh it doesn't sound like there are no there are many that we don't know about um, but uh, scarring and, you know, in, in your pulmonary so scarring, things so like that. Long-term lung damage. There's even neurological damage that can occur. Yeah. 
So, but I, but I, but I think there's a lot that we don't know. So. Oh yeah, sure. So I, my my only fear with taking a vaccine is you are, to a degree, introducing that in your body, and I, I mean I, I don't know. And well, if if the vaccine's been tested thoroughly, thoroughly and but and, that's and, the issue and with the testing is right, that so the vaccine isn't going to be the most vaccines have been tested over a certain amount of time, like three to five years. They've condensed this into months. Which, that's my problem. Which I believe is, they're going to do ser serious, solid testing. But I just want to kind of see how it plays out in the general public. Yeah. And I'm so sure we're going to hear some more. What I want is I want there to be longer-term testing to see how, what's the effectiveness of the vaccine over time and what's the, like, side effects or other effects of the vaccine over time. And once I have a little bit more assurance and have more evidence, then sure, I'll take it. I, and I would encourage everybody else to also take the vaccine. But if the vaccine comes out January 1st, I'm not going to be in line on January 2nd. No, I, I completely agree. Let me just so, comments real quick. But here, let me just keep on going with like, okay. if we're going to talk, talk purely about um, forecasting for, for COVID. So one virus isn't going to go away. If anything, it's probably going to continue to get a little bit worse until we change our national approach to it. And that by that, I mean masks and social distancing and all that other stuff. If, and when the vaccine comes out, it's not like that's going to make it go away either because it takes time for them to get everybody the proper doses and everything for everyone to even get the vaccine. And then you need to let the vaccine kind of do its work. So even if you were to get, let's just say vaccine comes out January 1st and on January 2nd, everybody in the country is vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Virus still isn't going to go away January 3rd. It's going to take another month or two to really work its way out. So, and, and let's be realistic here. Uh, also, so when it comes to herd immunity, which you hear uh, is a term thrown around a lot on vaccines and whatnot, generally you need at least 90% of the population. It's like 90 to 95%, somewhere in that range to, to have this, this kind of herd immunity where the virus, if it infects somebody who's not vaccinated, has a really hard time finding somebody else to jump to. Mm -hmm. So we would need... 90% or so of people to get vaccinated. And that's going to take a lot of time because even once this thing gets approved by the FDA, it's going to take time for them to produce it and distribute it. And for people to actually find the time to go to a doctor or a vaccination site and actually get it. And that's providing you health insurance because we don't know what the availability of it's going to look like free across the board. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point, is how is this going to be priced? Who's going to have access to it? And what are we going to do for the people that don't have health insurance and couldn't afford the vaccine if it weren't provided them for free? Um, yeah, how do we take care of these people? Because even, even if we say, you know what, like, you, like if you can't afford it, you don't get it. Well, the thing is, we're not just hurting them. They're, like by getting them vaccinated, you're helping the rest of society. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's, that's vaccines. Um, question for you next. Do I do, uh, do I do an Einstock, the red beer? Do I do another blue margarita or do I hit the uh, old fashioned? I would say go old fashioned because you just did a blue drink. Now, well, yeah, so you got to go to a red drink. Um, Oh, that's a good question. Because well, let's 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 ask uh, the live. I'm gonna flip. I'm gonna, yeah, let's see what the people say. I'm gonna flip a coin. Um, heads, you're doing old fashioned. Tails, you're doing beer. All right. Uh, here we go. I got one old fashioned vote. One old fashioned vote. Um, Rosh, I know Rosh is watching. Uh, I got one margarita vote. Um, <laughs> that wasn't an option, Rosh. No, the blue margarita. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. That wasn't an option because we're going to a red drink next. You do red drink and blue drink afterwards. Oh, okay. So, so you're saying it's old-fashioned or beer? Yes. Okay, well, all right. If you guys are watching, it's old-fashioned or beer. James, you got the blue drink down there with the red tie on? Yeah. I can switch uh, to a blue tie. It looks like the margarita is, is really winning. Um, so uh, it... It's gonna be tough. Uh, old fashioned or beer? We got beer, old fashioned beer. 
and beer's winning. Rosh is typing to me. <laughs> uh, old fashioned, but make it blue. I, you can't make it old fashioned blue. I don't know how. Actually, you know what you could? You, you could do a splash of the, the curacao in there, and that's going to add some orange and some sweetness. So reduce the sugar. Oh, you're right on that. You're, reduce you the are, sugar. You are right on that. And you can, and it's just going to be a slightly more orange forward old fashioned. But well, you're not going to be yeah, ruining they, the drink by doing they, this. Yeah, they said the curse was like a like a burnt orange. Um, right. So curse are like bitter oranges. That could make for a good drink. All right. Well, here is your election drink, 2020. If it turns out well, if I do do a yeah do a blue old fashioned. All right. Well, I'm gonna need uh, I'm gonna need a new glass because God forbid I use this one. I'm going to hit the, uh, the crystal glasses here. So here's my recommendation for the blue old fashioned. All right. So I'm going to make it. We're going to make it. If you guys are watching live and you have any assemblance of a bar, well, you probably can't do this unless you have the blue carousel. Um, blue carousel is not a pretty, not a common ingredient. I, I, it's not something that I stock often. It's cheap as shit. And I think I will always stock it moving forward because you One can half. basically use it as a replacement for triple sec though exactly. so. all right all right so here we go let me tell me how to make it here james all right so i would start with a half ounce of blue carousel are we going in a shaker or are we going into the glass you can build in the glass all right. if you want all right so let me just rinse the hot sauce out of this uh yeah you don't want hot sauce in your old-fashioned well I mean, you might i i don't think you do you probably a little weird if you do uh i can do hot sauce on a margarita all right here we yeah, are. but that's different. So I go half ounce blue carousel in the glass. All right, looking very blue so far. Yep. And now I would do probably about two ounces of bourbon. That's an ounce and a half. Uh, yes, ounce and a half. Let me do another half ounce. This is a nice, nice jigger, actually. All right, we're, we're deep blue. We're, we, yeah. We're deep blue. We're deep state over here. So, so now, um, dashes of bitters to taste. So I'd probably do like three or four dashes of bitters. I'm going to go a little lighter on the bitters, actually. I said to taste. Yeah, well, I'm not tasting anything yet, so. All right. Um, and now I would do probably about a half ounce to an ounce of water. Really? All right. Let me get that cold water moving here. I'd start with a half ounce and see how it looks. All right. Half ounce. Uh, yeah. And then I would give it. If I had if I had a straw, this is where this is where I would poke the drink to taste. Uh, well, we're gonna mix. Uh, we're skipping the cherries on this one, right? Oh, you could do the cherry. I, I think an orange, the orange garnish is gonna yeah, work I'm better gonna, on this I'm, one. I'm gonna lean orange wise here because I just I think that. All right, and that makes the most sense here. But yeah, I would poke the drink and taste it right now to see how it, how it comes together. Well, I, I'm sure it's not too bad. It actually tastes like a decent, but strong old fashioned. That's what I would expect based yeah. on how we mixed yeah. it. And I'm definitely getting that that nice orange. Uh, this this one's gonna turn out a bit more purple. Um, just because. All right, I'm gonna take uh, the orange here. All right. Oh yeah. This is gonna taste pretty uh pretty strong orange. Yeah, nice ice cube. Well, and that's where that's where you can also add a little bit of water or you can put the ice cube in there and let the, the ice cube do its work and water it down a little bit. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna let the ice cube do its work. We are still blue. Uh, all right, let's hit some more election results. If you guys are live. Hopefully you're watching for the election. You guys on Instagram, 
Um, hang tight because we're going to get you. I'm curious who's the more political crowd. I feel like it's Instagram. Um, it could be, uh, could be, could be, could be TikTok, but who knows? Not much has changed as far as what our projections are right now. Um, I really, I'm pissed that my uh, political futures markets are so slow right now because I trust them so much more. But the the website is effectively down right now. Yeah, I feel like that's that's likely going to happen. Uh, about time to show my bartender skills. I actually think bartending to me is too high stress. It's really it's creating a stressful situation into something that I like to take very lax. Uh, you know, I like to take my time with a drink. I like to experiment. I like to fuck up. Um, and I like to drink, which are kind of all things you can't do when you're behind a bar. Experimenting can be tough. Experimenting you can do. Yeah, but experimenting can be tough. You got to have a free time. It depends on where you are. Fucking up, not really great. Uh, yeah, well, if you do, if the thing, the thing about bartending is once you start doing it professionally and you're making the same drink 20, 30, 40 times a night, you stop fucking it up because you get into a rhythm where you just know the recipe. You don't even need to measure. You don't like, it's just, I know three count here, four count here, this amount of mixer, ice, shake, strain, done next drink. Like you, you start to learn that process very quickly and you don't fuck up drinks once you've made them a number of times. Yeah. And the other thing about bartending, so when I, when I was training bartenders, one of the pieces of advice that I gave to them was you need to know your bar. And that means, one, know where everything in the bar is. You should sure. be able to find a bottle blindfolded. You should be able to find a mixture and ingredient blindfolded because when it gets fast, you don't have time to look for things. Two is also going along with knowing your bar is you should know what every ingredient behind your bar tastes like individually. You should know what every liquor tastes like, what every mixer tastes like. So that way, then what you do is once you start mixing drinks or whatever, you develop this kind of skill where as you're mixing a drink, you can be tasting it in your head. As you're mixing the drink, you know what it's going to be tasting like as you go. So you don't have to stop and poke a drink and make sure that it tastes right because you're already tasting it with just by looking at it. The way that you develop that skill is by making drinks, poking them, and seeing how they're coming out. Just like how cooks will taste the dishes that they're making as they're in progress, same thing goes with bartending. If you make drinks enough, then you no longer have to taste your drinks because you know what they're going to taste like before time, beforehand, which is why I was able to coach you through making this drink and getting it pretty close without even being in the same room. But I'll tell you, as somebody who doesn't like much sweetness on an old-fashioned I actually feel like, uh, let me just put another mix because it's, it's settled out a little bit. Some of the ice is melted, which means the warm water is probably more on the top. And we are like extremely blue. Um, yeah, blue curacao has got a lot of dye in it. Yeah, it could, use, it could use, like I said, there's a sweet spot that I find that a strong old fashioned, um, it kind of mellows out, but it still has an intense old fashioned. So give it another hit of bitters and a light splash of bourbon. Yeah, but I think uh, it's a bitters may help. Bitters guarantees will help. And we're going to hit it with the bourbon. All right. So uh, it says, uh, <laughs> uh, so I actually, I just pulled up, uh, I pulled up some news. I don't have a lot in terms of places I can tune into, but I really am looking for a map. Um, and uh, I've got one. We just hit a, well, I can't see it. Yo, so, yeah, I can, I can screen share. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. I forgot you're in control now. Yeah. Take a look at this. So here's our map. All right. So what States do you want me to go over? Uh, well, I want to, so it looks like New York going blue. It Only 12%, but... Yeah, which, which I think is wild that it's, it's so low. And then you've got Florida, which is only light pink. What's Florida looking at? Uh, 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 91. But I wonder, you know, I wonder how, what the uh, proportion of early votes 
or or mail in mail in votes. Uh, you know, make the but that's wild for sixty one percent. Wait, go back to Texas. Go back to Texas. Okay, that's pretty close though. That's super close. Yeah, but that's ninety for eighty thousand eighty thousand votes. Yeah, with with thirty eight percent still to go. Um, but if we look, so the other one, so North Carolina. Biden's got a decent lead, but there's still a lot left to go. Missouri, that's I, I throw that result out right now. Kansas, I'm going to throw that result out right now. Colorado is probably going to go blue. Virginia, this one's weird. I don't get why they're reporting Joe Biden winning Virginia when he's down 18% with 60 with 60% of the votes left to go. But Pennsylvania is going to be a really big one. Ohio is probably going to go Trump, but who knows? It, it, it's really hard to tell right now. But I, I think we need to kind of just let the, the uh, results kind of settle for a little bit first. Yep. Um, so let's continue on with our, with our prognostication here. So I've got the, the, the vaccine's not going to have an immediate impact, and it's not even going to come out soon. Coronavirus is with us whether you like it or not. And it's not going to go away until we start changing our approach a little bit. And I don't see us changing our approach under Trump. If Biden wins, then we might see our approach change in two months. And I don't really know how much more than to do besides implementing some kind of a national mask mandate, which will have some effect. But, you know, but I, I think, think you're going to I think a whole bunch of people that are going to resist it because they don't want to tell them what to do. I think we are going to see a little more in terms of um in terms of money being sent to the every every man if Biden wins I think there's yeah be, I think there's gonna be another round of checks I think tw- I I don't know the deal with Biden I, I think it's unlikely but I mean for me I got a twelve hundred dollar check and you know my monthly expenses as a business person are probably considerably higher than my next door neighbor we, given we live in the same building, we pay the same amount for rent, uh, which is well over twelve hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, but but the fact that my business shut down and I got twelve hundred dollars, and we don't know whether this guy's business shut down or not, he could still be working every day, and he got the same amount. I think is is wild. Well, you also had the opportunity to get PPP funds and other state assistance that somebody like me who works just works for somebody else for a W-2. Like I did, all I got was a $1,200 check. I didn't get any additional assistance. But whereas, PPP for me, PPP for me, oh shit, I never moved the cameras back over. PPP for me covers uh, employees and my mm-hmm. business is um, you know, 98% non-employee and mostly independent contractors. So I was eligible for an EIDL loan, but that is a loan and not a grant. So it needs to Yeah, be- but it's a 30 year note. Sure. Um, but, but, you know, who knows if that's going to be enough to, to get us over the net, oh, you know, over the following six months. And if it doesn't, it's still, you know, there's a personal guarantee on that, which, yeah. which um, you know. Yeah, but it's still, I, I think, yeah, there, there's definitely questions about whether or not the, the approach to the stimulus and everything back in March and April was correct. And there's definitely questions about what the best approach to continuing to stimulate the economy is going to be because the economy certainly needs it. There's still lots of people that are hurting pretty badly. I think that there's a strong argument to be made for what's called a K-shaped recovery. Uh, that, that doesn't make any sense to me. So if you think about like a V-shaped recovery is going to be stock markets here, it goes down, and then it immediately comes back up. So down, up, V, right? Mm-hmm. So K-shaped recovery is going to be a V, but you've got this side going up and then you've got another side that also goes down. And so obviously that's impossible on one stock chart, but what a K-shaped recovery basically means is that there's going to be winners and losers. And so you're going to have some people that do very well, Mm -hmm. and then you're going to have a whole bunch of other people 
that never recover. Okay, and fully understood. I, I feel like the part of the K that's got his foot on the ground, just saying. So that's a you can, yeah, you can look at some segments that I would say restaurant workers, hospitality workers, anybody that works in an entertainment field, like concert venues, artists, and then other service-based industries, which you're a service-based industry, which yeah. depends a lot on person-to-person -person interaction. And also your business is going to be affected also by the general economic status of everybody because people can either afford rent or they can't. And the general status of the economy is going to dictate how much rent people can afford, which means that you have more or less options available for the people that you're trying to sell to. So, but you can look at some companies like um, Zoom, for example, is up 500 something percent this year. But I, I think there's very few companies. Funny, the thing about Zoom, which we are using now, is that I would have, I would never have seen Zoom coming. Net meeting, I've heard of, and Skype. Uh, and Skype has been kind of the one that I've used in business the most because- Skype has gotten rolled into Microsoft Teams. Well, I was always under the impression that Skype was kind of like the big one that everybody was likely to have, especially if they didn't have FaceTime. So, I, it's, I don't, it's just it's just funny that this Skype isn't you Skype somebody via Zoom and and Skype is almost you know as much Skype as yeah well Zoom has taken over from Skype but the point that I'm saying is that you've got a select few companies that have done amazingly well because of the coronavirus hey, look, and then Biden Biden is up in North Carolina and Ohio right now North Carolina is tight fifty point two to forty eight point six Ohio. 50.4 to 48.3. So uh, North Carolina and Ohio are like this. Georgia, 40% and 56 to Trump. Yeah, that's... Um, that's... But I, I also, you know, looking at the population of Georgia, I think you've got a lot of mail-in ballots that, that are going to... Yeah, leave. you've also got a lot going on with, um, again, rural versus metropolitan. Yeah, but I think, I think a lot of your metropolitan are your mail-in votes. North Carolina, I'm willing to bet North Carolina goes Biden because I'm looking at a district by district map of North Carolina right now, and most of the rural districts are in, but there's two counties north and south of Raleigh that haven't reported right yet, right and now. those are probably going to go Biden. So I see Biden extending his lead mm. in North Carolina. That's, that's my bet. Um, Florida, I'm going to have to bet on, I'm going to have to bet on Trump for, for Florida. Mm. Texas is a dead heat. That's crazy to me right now. I'm, I'm so, I feel like, what's the, what's the percentage count in Florida? It's high already? Florida is at 91% and Trump is up by close to 400,000. They're saying Biden uh, is getting New Jersey? Yeah. I wouldn't have saw that coming. I, I would have told you that before today. I would have said that there is a huge chance that Biden wins New Jersey. That's 16, 16 votes, I guess. Yeah, but that was um, – yeah. Well, the fact that it looks like South Carolina – no, it's saying 31% in. But, it, it, you know, if – I feel like if South Carolina goes Trump, they're also going Lindsey Lindsey Graham. Not necessarily. the uh, The presidential race and the Senate race have not ha have been dislocated for quite some time now. Hmm. Really? Mm hmm. Why? Because a lot of people are disenchanted with Lindsey Graham. And you've got a lot of Trump voters feel like Lindsey Graham didn't go, go far enough. And a lot of independent voters that really disliked Hillary Clinton in, in 2016 that voted for Trump because they didn't like Clinton now see Harrison as a better option than, than Lindsey Graham. The, the two races, I, I don't think that there's a lot of similarities between Harrison Graham and Trump Biden. I, I, I think you have to look at them independently. Hmm. Yeah, inter interesting as this stuff comes in. I remember 2016 being up until uh, like four o'clock in the morning. I think I think we had a. It looked like it was in at like th a little after three. 
But I don't remember being up until four o'clock in the morning. I don't think we're gonna. I count. bartended that night. Did you? Yeah. TVs in the restaurant? Huh? TVs were in the restaurant. Every TV was on election coverage. I had election night drinks. Um, one of these. Um, one the so actually the the blue drink was a blue margarita. Oh yeah, no shit, really. It it it, it totally was. Um, the the red drink was a weird concoction that actually didn't taste that bad, but it was Goldschlager and like orange juice and something else. Goldschlager, orange juice, and like grenadine maybe. Ooh, and a good idea for a quick. I'll be right back. One second. I got a I got a really good one for uh, a red and blue drink. Be right back. Oh, you're gonna do a layered drink? No, no, no. no oh, right. you should totally do a layered drink if you got the the grenadine because the grenadine would sit nice on the bottom. But yeah, right now it's it's kind of tough for us to be able to look too hard at any of these election results right now. Because we're just waiting on on so much to still come in. And like even Wisconsin and Michigan are reporting heavy Trump, but they're only like 15 to 20 percent. And I'm really fascinated by Texas right now because I was not expecting it to be as close as it is. Um, Me too. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little surprised that there's there's any issue going on in Texas other other than straight red. So uh, um so other predictions for the next year, I'm going to say if, uh, if Biden wins, I, I, I actually would be willing to bet that uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw pot federally legalized in the next year. Yeah, I think there's a pretty high chance on that. Because pretty much every state that has legalized it has seen positive results. Um, like when I went when I was in California a week and a half ago, we we went into a dispensary, and the system that they had seemed to work pretty well. Like they checked our IDs, they took down our information, and then we just walked into the back and we could buy whatever we wanted, and it didn't seem to cause any problems. And you can look at a state like Colorado that's seen massive tax revenue from from pot sales, and Colorado deserves a lot of credit for leading the charge there. And I don't even. I don't even do the pots, but I think it's. You don't do the pots? You don't do the pot? I don't really do the pots either. Am I really? I mean, I don't. I don't have anything against it, but. When I was in California, I did drink. They had, um, like, cannabis drinks. Because, like, I don't like smoking. Um, But I did have uh, a couple, like, shots from a cannabis drink. And it reminded me why I don't do the pots. (laughs) Why is that? I don't like the way it makes me feel. I don't really either. I don't really. I, li- I love alcohol. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that people shouldn't do it. I have no issue with the drug, but it's just not really for me. I'm, I'm generally anti-drug. My, uh, my favorite pots are all clad. Great, great cooking. They cook very evenly. They heat very fast. <laughs> big, big all clad. Yo, give me a sec. Let me. I'm gonna re up my beer. My fan. Keep the people's entertained for a minute. I'm gonna get myself another beer. <clears throat> All right, go for it. So I'm gonna try to figure out what you guys are watching. Uh, and don't bear in mind, some news is actually gonna start coming because the results are coming. And next poll closes at 10 o'clock. That's another 23 minutes. We're gonna stay in line as long as we can. Um, CB is awesome. Hi, no hi. I'm in benefits. Um, Justin, where's the red and the blue drink? I'm about to make that red and blue drink while James is gone. I'm back. Oh, gee, I, excuse me. Uh, well, it's grabbing a beer. It's not going to take me more than 30 seconds. All right. So I'm just going to freehand a drink here. Um, you can, what are you making? You can criticize me all, all you want, but just. Uh, just well, you watch. put the ice in first, so at least you got the first step right. I saw you. That was the old drink. So. Oh. All right, we're gonna hit the tequila and then throw this. Oh, fuck, actually, this is not gonna work. Uh, throw this back in the <laughs> Looks free- like you're doing a tequila shot. <laughs> no, I'm not, not taking a tequila, tequila shot. Um, at least not alone. Uh, I don't have any tequila with me. I could do a shot of Seagram 7 with you. Um, I gotta work tomorrow. I do too. 
All right, you want to do a tequila shot, or uh, you want to do a shot? Uh, sure, why shot? not? Let me let me go get a shot glass and whatnot. I'll be back in a sec. All right, go for it. Here we are. I'm gonna start preparing my drink and slice this uh, limon verde. Thank you for the shot glass there. All right, my silent producer just produced. Shot glass, 50 caliber, which is, which is a big, it's a big shell casing here. Pour some tequila in there in just a minute. Squeezing some limes. We are gonna make another blue margarita with a red twist. And I don't mean a purple drink. If I pull this off, uh, I actually think it's gonna look pretty cool. Uh, in the meantime, let me pour out this tequila shot. Oh, uh, shit, that's, uh, that's not going to work, is it? All right, so we're going to suspend the spherical ice, pour tequila halfway across the keyboard. If we lose you, blame the tequila. Uh, North Carolina, 80% in, Biden leading. Uh, wow, all right, which is more important in North Carolina, rebuilding the economy or containing the coronavirus? And it looks like containing the coronavirus, which is probably why it went Biden. Uh, all right, James, I got my 50 caliber shot here. That's big. So I, um, in case Trump wins, I am toasting with a Montreal, Canada shot glass. Fair enough. If Trump wins, we may do a few more shots. Mm. Uh, on that note, cheers to Montreal. <laughs> That's awful. That was a huge shot. Holy shit. This is a big glass. Oh, God, it's like a midget pint glass. As if you were in a midget, it would be almost like a pint. Holy crap. And it is off the list, though. Um, speaking with my brother earlier today, so he was saying, so he works remote. He does mortgage origination, but he, he works from home. Um, and he talked with his bosses about being able to work from like a different country or whatever. And they gave him the thumbs up. My brother said, what do you think about moving down to the, uh, the Caribbean? If, uh, if Trump wins again, I said, I'm in. Yeah. I'm in with you too. Uh, where are you thinking about going to the Caribbean? Um, good question. Now th I know this isn't the Caribbean per se, but Bermuda is an interesting option. Isn't that under British rule? It is. Fuck that. Um, but so Bermuda's <laughs> one choice. And then um, I would say, like, maybe the Cayman Islands? If that, I feel like that's in the Caribbean. We always have uh, DR, the hidden gem of the Caribbean. All right. Um, but maybe uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, all right. Come on. Let's take a look. What else? What else is good in the Caribbean? Um, probably not Jamaica. Maybe the DR. Um, I would say well, Puerto you, Rico, you, but you could get a nice boat, and and then you, all you got to worry about is docking expenses. All right, so I'm about to. Uh, I'm really going to push my bar creativity here on this red and blue drink, and uh, all right, let's see. All right, so I got my uh, my sugar rim here, and uh, what are you making? I'm doing my best to stay politically neutral. How about that? That actually oh. was when I was playing, minus the fact I didn't put any ice in the drink. Yo, complete complete non sequitur. Have you ever heard of the band Super Organism? Yeah. Really? Uh, is that that's not the one that doesn't have any words in their song, right? No, no, they've got words. All right, so hold up. I, <laughs> I just anybody who's watching or listening, I just like to share the time that you came and you stayed here, and you. Uh, I think we've been drinking, but you invited us to listen to some music on the TV. L ten eleven. And or it was about seventeen minutes of music and. I'll be a good music, but with no lyrics and pretty lacking music videos. Oh, yeah, and um, uh, Fujiya and Miyagi. 
Yeah. Yeah, love that. So, uh, either way, uh, uh, it sounds like Rosh is on board. Rosh, are you drinking with us? Uh, Debbie, are you drinking with us? Sugar gives Cholongo. Somebody's got to explain to me what uh, Cholongo is. Uh, Cholongo. Uh, Rosh, what are you drinking? If you guys are live with us, I am really curious if you are drinking and what you are drinking. I, I, um, I have no idea. I'm about to, uh, about to dig into my sugary blue margarita. Never made a blue margarita before tonight, and uh, I'm really happy I stopped for the extra $12 bottle of liqueur. Um, in the meantime, uh, somebody's got to tell me if it's sacrilege. Uh, Rosh says he's drinking Johnny Walker Black Label. Good for you, Johnny Walker Black Label. Um, cheers to your margarita, Debbie. Um, and Born Queen, cheers to your Corona. Um, somebody can tell me maybe whether it's sacrilege or not to burn competing saints candles. I feel like there's just a whole uh, royal, rumble, royal rumble of prayer billowing upwards. And maybe that's good. Maybe we need a royal rumble, royal rumble of prayer going upwards tonight for the election. I'm going to taste this blue margarita, actually. That's wonderful. Needs more tequila, though. Well, you uh, got more tequila. I got a whole bottle. And we'll see how long we can go live for. But, uh, no, my brother is totally uh, – he, he was talking about uh, wanting to move to the Caribbean. And so earlier today – so I was in the office, and I was hungover pretty much the entire day in the office. And – kind of loosely following a little bit of pre-election hype and you know the whatever news is breaking out there and at one point during the day i thought about like the prospect of trump winning again spoiler alert, guys i'm not a fan um but i thought you know what I, I had like this little like wave of anxiety come over me because i realized in my head i was like i can't do another four years of this i just can't and I was like, you know what? If, if Trump wins, I'm out. I, I, I got to move somewhere. And I realized that, like, the anxiety that I was feeling for this election was, like, not only am I going to be moving my apartment to somewhere else, I'm going to be moving to a different country with basically no plan. And that's how we moved to – that when we moved to South Carolina, we, you had more of a plan than I did. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> not saying much because I barely had a plan. Yeah, ex exactly. That plane existed up somewhere to make a few bucks a week, basically. Yeah. Uh, um, but this, this is going to be the longest of a TikTok player. in history, Rosh says. Well, as long as we can keep recording, James is really in charge. He's the he's the leader of this meeting. Oh well, I I, I I'm here as long as as long as you want, man. I, I have cleared my schedule. I got no like I've told all the women that are like lined up outside my apartment. All right, ladies, you're just going to have to wait a night. I got other things to do. Yeah, I noticed your doorbell was going off a lot earlier. Um, that's why you closed all the blinds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looked like somebody ransacked your bedroom, too, which... No, this is how it always looks. Oh, because of different women, yeah. Understood. No. Understood. Um, all right, so let me just hit some comments real quick. Hi, yeah, from, Guat Hi from Guatemala. Uh, you need to test Zacapa Centenarial Rum. Ooh, Never even good. heard of that. Never even heard of that. How do you spell it? Uh, Mary lives, laughs, and loves. Uh, Zacapa, all A Z A K Z A C A P A. Uh, Centenario. Oh, it looks really good. Really? No, yeah, it's it. super dark. Uh, I I like a dark one. What I really like is a uh, is a it's not cheap, but it looks good. Um, uh, really? How much? How much for a bottle? Anywhere between forty and one hundred and twelve. Mm. It looks really good, though. Great recommendation, whoever whoever you were. I like it. I'm gonna. I, I might actually buy a bottle of it. Tita Bonita, fifty three. Uh, I'm in Aruba on vacation. It's all about the rum punch. Yeah, rum punch in Aruba, big mm. drink. Rum punch, yeah. not my favorite. Not my favorite. Um, it's too much. You add too many sweet for the same reason. I don't like a Long Island iced tea, which Long Island iced tea, great drink, especially if it's made well. Well, uh, you can you can tailor the sweetness on a on a lit. 
but uh, but a rum punch, I don't know, it's too sweet for me. It's too. Uh, this is pretty sweet for me. I like these blended. I'm not about to break out the blender. Also, I'm running low. Don't don't do that. I'm running really low on. Uh, that'd be a nice blended drink. Looking actually, I'm running low on ice cubes. I haven't I haven't frozen ice uh, in a while. I haven't um, butter and, and made ice in a while. What was I gonna say? You you're much more of a fan of the Amaros than I am, though. Yeah, uh, Amaro was my key to the paper plane, which is a Amaro, Aperol, Bourbon, and Lemon. And I never made one before, spent much attention on them before. And I started making that and realized this Basically is- Basically a whiskey sour with Amaro. Yeah, yeah. And, but it has, it has a deeper, by one or two steps, flavor profile. Because the Amaro. Um, I don't. I, Amaro for me is something that you have to be really careful with. I don't like drinks that are like Amaro forward. I like, sometimes I like Amaro as kind of an end note, but if your base of a drink is all Amaro and it has some other profile as a secondary characteristic, I'm out. Uh, correction, the barrel bourbon. Uh, Mary, you got to tell me more about this barrel bourbon. Uh, maybe we'll get a bottle on the show. Um, just, you know, like licorice drinks, obviously, Rosh, you know that. Um, oh, no. Chartreuse, Sambuca, all those are not good. And then I'm getting some flack. I'm putting too much uh, Curacao in, uh, in this drink, which probably I did, but that's why I added more tequila. Barrel bourbon looks good, but it's super expensive. And how much is a barrel bourbon? I'm seeing between 130 well, – I'm seeing between 90 and 240 bucks. Holy shit. Well, uh, Mary, yeah, uh, you may have to ship that bottle. I – Huh. Uh, that's out of the budget right now. We're uh, we don't know which way the economy is going. James is is trading stock futures. Uh, no, I'm not even I'm not even doing that. Um, so let's see. Projected winner of Arkansas, Donald Trump. Colorado, not surprising. Colorado Biden. Also not that surprising. Uh, let's uh, see. Color. Yeah, Colorado is what we would have expected. Yeah, you got Colorado Springs. Uh, cheers to Max. I, uh, I think Max's birthday is tomorrow. Oh, is Max is Max in on this? No, Max usually hits us on the Facebook, throws some comments via Facebook. Um, I would love to. Uh, uh, I'd love to see if we can get him to join, but I think he's probably. I don't know what he's doing actually. Uh, uh, let's see. All right, Max, Max, Max in Colorado Springs. He's really not moving. I actually have somebody else's birthday I know in Colorado Springs. Uh, let me send a quick message out to uh, to Max, see if uh, if he jumps on board. But yeah, I think his birthday is this week. Um, but Colorado's got to be an interesting place to be for the election. So I'd really love to hear about that. Uh, all right, absinthe. Rush, big. Rush is a big fan of absinthe, actually. Oh no, thank you. Yeah, it's not. It's not my thing. You know, I. Uh, I try. I, I. You know, I like that. There's some absinthe rinses you can do, but that's about as heavy in the absinthe that I can take a drink for. Agree. Sweet drinks, no bueno. Uh, I couldn't finish my bottle of absinthe. Too sweet. A Bombay Sapphire, big gin fan. I, I'm really Bombay good. Sapphire is good. Um, yeah. Uh, shit, I ate all these tacos. There's taco shit all over the floor. It's really <laughs> tough to eat live, but, you know, I figure it's Taco Tuesday, so why not Why not eat live on air? Uh, if you guys are listening to this, you really miss some great visuals with about a cup and a half of hot sauce. Um, fun times. Uh, all right, all right, all right. So... I'm on a commercial break in my end. I have no maps. We're still early. All right, so. Uh, go ahead. And, well, I've, I've got a better election map up right now with a whole bunch of data. But uh, Florida, I'm willing to make my bet on it being Trump, although we're, we're still going with uh, too early to call is what the, the news organizations are going with. But Trump is ahead by almost 400,000 with only 7% left to go. Um, Georgia, too early to call. There's too much left out there. Texas, at 76%, it's 50 to 48. 
Um, I don't know, man. I. So wait, Texas, which way? Oh, Trump. Trump 50 oh, to 40. Yeah, yeah, yeah I saw that coming. But earlier it was a reverse. Earlier it was. It earlier was it was a dead heat. Earlier it was within 0.1%. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think, I mean, I, it's freaking Texas. Texas goes. Yeah. Ooh, I like this map. Okay. So now I can see. All right. What are we waiting on? I just got a text from Adam saying that Biden is likely to squeak by or more likely to lose. Um, wild times, man. Wild times. Yeah, I'm willing to place my bets on Florida going for Trump. I mean, at, at that percentage, 400,000 is a huge. What's the total population? Alexa, what's the total population of Florida? As of 2017, the population of Florida is 20.98 million. 21.5 million. And but how many people vote traditionally in Florida? Um, turnout you can probably expect to be between 55 and 60 percent. Hmm. So about about a little over 10 million. So 10 to 12 million. So 12. Uh, what? What? Uh, I'm rounding this a little bit because I think that's more. Well, all right. So let's go 12 million times 0 0.07. So 840,000 people, let's assume, are left uncounted as of right now. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you're going to make I don't think that's all going to go towards I don't think more than 50% of that is going to go towards even if 60% goes for Biden. But it also makes you wonder what is the why is that outstanding? Um and and yes, uh in the, this is my New York City kitchen. Uh, there's not much in here outside of our bar setup because uh, I am moving soon, and uh, I just prepared today for uh, for some drinks. So uh, you got my shrine to uh, tequila, and that's about it. And most of the tequila actually is packed in boxes. So it's tough. I had to stop at the store actually and buy the curacao and uh, and the tequila. I was luckily. I was lucky to have some bourbon on hand, but that that actually stayed out of the um, stayed out of the boxes. But there's two giant boxes which weigh about 120 pounds each, full of liquor and wine bottles. And Political's futures market still down. I am so pissed right now because I would love to see where the markets are. What is I, down? What is my, down to me means buy? By the way, what? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that I can't even access the website. The website itself is down. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, and I didn't mean political futures. I meant, I meant just kind of the, the generic futures market. Okay. Oh, no. So, oh, um, oh the, the stock market futures? I haven't even looked at those. Um, the stock market popped pretty hard today, which to me, it's really hard to draw a conclusion from what the stock market's doing. Um, I can say that implied volatility in the markets is pretty high in the short term. Um, so we should be expecting a fairly large move in the markets in the next two or three days. But I don't care about what the stock markets are doing, despite having investments and whatnot. Like I care about what the political futures markets are saying right now, because to me, that tells me so much more than the actual elections results. Well, look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm watching these results come in. Um, I don't, I don't feel one way or the other. A lot of shit's up in the air. Mm -hmm. um, we've been, we, this is a pretty long cast for us. We are on, uh, we're on hour two now. We're almost on hour two. Yeah. Which is, which is wild for us. We've never made, this is podcast number 51. Um, we've never made one this long. So the fact that we got you guys online, uh, I appreciate that. It looks like TikTok's actually held pretty strong. Um, Love the TikTok people. Which, which I like TikTok. TikTok, we got a, a lot of good comments, um, a lot of cool follows. And these guys just follow my, my daily TikToks, which are pretty much just some positive messages and telling people not to be fucking dumb. Um, which is like legit pretty much all, all my daily posts. Consider. See me fuck up drinking my beer. <laughs> I, I missed I entirely missed that. But yep. but tomorrow I may start off with 
today is Wednesday, November 4th. You better put shit in your mouth the right way. Otherwise, you're going to mess up your tie. I, I have a drinking problem, apparently. Well, yeah, you clearly have a big problem for you. It's not. It's, no, I, I actually spilled it all over my tie, which is fucking wonderful okay. because I love this tie. And thank you. Thank you, Mary. I'm glad you tuned in on TikTok. I think you're right now on Instagram. Uh, you guys can always tune in on Facebook. And don't forget, if you guys are watching now, you owe me big time, especially if you've been here for a little while, you've got to hit that YouTube channel. Um, we're really looking to build up YouTube. And without you guys subscribing, following, liking our, uh, our videos, uh, we're kind of fucked because we can't grow without you guys. And we do this for you guys. We actually, we love the involvement. We love reading the comments. We love the user feedback. Um, it's, it's cool as fuck that James and I get to hang out and, and talk shit, but, uh, you know, we can do this without you. Uh, and James is a pretty camera shy person. James is not on social media. Uh, if you want to get in touch with him, I will give you his snail mail PO box. You can send him a handwritten letter. No anthrax, please. Um, but, but yeah, we're doing this for you guys. Uh, we're doing it really to just kind of spread some positivity and knowledge and, uh, you know, we're not out there with the technology. We're not out there trying to sway people, uh, you know, to vote blue or vote red. Um, we're, just, we're just out there to perpetuate critical thinking and in-depth com- conversation and some science, uh, help people with relationships and, and maybe life issues. And I really, James, you know what we need to get into is we need to get involved with people sharing some of the issues they're, they're involved in. Uh, and kind of talking them through that you and I both give some, good I love that idea. You and I both give some good advice and, and we live pretty, pretty solid lives kind of following our own advice. Um, you know, I think we're, we're pretty capable of thinking independently and not getting too blinded by emotion or, or too deep into a problem without but I think both of us also have the wherewithal to, to be able to source advice from people. I know I've asked for you for advice before, and there's been a couple of times where I've screwed up where you've really come to my rescue. Yeah, and, and vice versa. You know, we, we've both been in, in strife in life. And, uh, but, but usually we reach out you know, for advice on, on those levels when, when we realize uh, – our emotional dictation is kind of overriding our, our logical dictation. Yeah. And, and if I'm over my skis. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's when we need another logical person to really to, to say, look, your emotion is, is a chemical response that you have no control over. You're, you're, you're following the logic is, um, you know, is basically your, your true north is logic. And, uh, you know, and, and if you follow the emotion, that's your magnetic north. And, and, you know, generally it might get you in the right direction, but sometimes if you follow it too long, you're going to end up in the wrong place. Oh, uh, yep. Been there. <laughs> I think we both have. And that's what we have each other for. And that's what you guys have us for. Because uh, especially, you know, we double team and you're fucked. So I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But actually, you're not fucked. You're going to end up in a better place. Um, all right, let me just hit some comments real quick. I, yeah, see, man. I see a lot of ons and offs on, uh, on TikTok, and I love, you guys, I love you guys joining. If you stick around, just tell me what you want to hear, and that's what we're going to talk about. But tonight, it is, mostly, it is mostly politics. It is mostly the race to 270. We're looking at, uh, we're looking at Biden at 89. We're looking at Trump at 72. I got Biden at 131 and, and Trump at 98 right now. And where are you? What are you looking at? Uh, New York Times has an interactive election map that I like a lot. This mm-hmm. is my main one now. You're doing New York Times. You're not doing Associated Press. No. Um, the, the reason why I like the New York Times one is I can click into a state and look at the districts. Okay. Yeah. The, I, I mean, mine's not interactive. But mine, is, mine is straight. Uh, I actually, I didn't have, I like to do like uh, a little fox. And, I, and then I like to do a little like CNN or M, NS, MSNBC. Oh, so and, I've got the, the NBC stream going, but I don't like watching it because I can't control what I'm looking at. Well, I got NBC right now. And I, and I like to be able to switch between when I'm on the, the big screen, I got the iPad and a couple of, a couple of phones on me. Uh, I can go in between. But now, obviously, we're live. I'm watching you. I'm, not, I'm at a desktop, but I'm, I'm in the kitchen because we're here making drinks. Um, 
But next question, you guys, I see right now we got a, a few people on TikTok. What I want to know is what is the next drink, guys? What's, uh, what's getting mixed up next? We got a shaker. It could be a beer. We do, you have, uh, do you have brandy? It's packed up. It's packed up. I have no brandy. I was going to say make a sidecar. What's a sidecar? Brandy, lemon juice, and triple sec. Ooh, I could do the, uh, the blue uh, carousel, curacao. I could do the blue, blue curacao. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, there's no brandy. Uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Sidecar is a solid drink. Uh, all right. So we got Debbie with the beer. We got Samari with the old fashioned, uh, a rusty nail. Um, I don't remember that one off the top of my head. I don't know what a rusty nail is actually. Uh, it's going to be scotch and drambuie. Drambuie is good. It's just too sweet on its own, but mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of a niche liqueur that you're not going to see. Yeah, Never. you're not gonna see I, that everywhere. I have ever bought a bottle of Drambuie. Actually. Drambuie's good. Yeah. Um. I would say for the rusty nail, I would, I would, I would vary it up a little bit. So the traditional recipe is just two parts scotch, um, one part Drambuie. I think that um, orange bitters would add something to it. Yeah, I don't have any orange bitters. Either. Love orange uh, bitters. All right, so we got martini. We get a Cosmo, we get a White Russian, and an Irish Carbon. You guys understand that I have a pretty full bar here, James. Do you, ha do you have a uh, dry vermouth? Yeah, but it's packed up. Right now I have rum, tequila, curacao. Um, what juices perfect. do you have? Uh, lemon, lime, and orange. And I have a pear. I'm about to juice a pear. And you could actually... You know what? If you could juice the pear, you could make like a pear mai tai. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip out on that. Um, all right, James, do me a favor. Can you uh, can you update us? I gotta I gotta run out real quick. What states do we want to look at? Give me just lead me somewhere. I wanna I wanna hit there. I think I heard there's eight eight states that are really kind of the biggest swing states that are really gonna. Uh, saw this on Twitter this morning. That are really gonna dictate the election. Can you can you find and hit those? All right, so the states that are most important right now. Right. So in rough order of importance, Pennsylvania is only at 20% reported right now with Trump at 51 to 48. Wisconsin is at 51 to 48 Trump as well, um, but only 30% reported. Michigan is 58 to 40.2 with only 23% reported. Florida, which we've been talking about a good bit, Trump is up 51.2 to 47.7. That's about 400,000 votes, and Trump is up with 93%. So if I were, as I've said a number of times, if I were to have to bet, I see Trump carrying Florida. Georgia is at 51% reporting with Trump 56 to 43 North Carolina, Biden is up 49.7 to 49.1 at 84%. So North Carolina is leading Biden. Pennsylvania is the tough one. We already talked about it, but like Pennsylvania is huge. Ohio is close, 50.5 to 48.1 at 70%. Um, Texas is really close as well, 50.5 Trump. Biden 48.1 at 77% reported. But, um, I mean, Texas, that's Texas is going red. Texas is, is trending red right now, but it's close. Ooh. I see a 17 point spread right now, 17 electoral points. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to hit a quick beer. Uh, slow us down a little bit. We're, we're going to stay live. And we're just, I guess, I guess we're, we're, we'll just power through until uh, until I can't sit on this on this bar stool anymore in the middle. Of the I, I mean, I'm I'm not going anywhere. I got my as I said, my schedule is clear. All At right. some point, my like my roommate will come back from work, and maybe we even bring him in on the podcast because he's kind of been in the dark. He works at uh he he works at a grocery store, so he can't follow this all that closely while he's at work. All right. Well, we're running into a, a connection error actually. 
Let's see if I can. I'll see if I can fix that. Uh, it looks like What's we're it? overrunning my. Um, it looks like we're overrunning my. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Instagram. Yeah, Instagram's running into connection here. I guess we must be overrunning my uh, the Wi-Fi in the apartment. Um, I'm a fit, I'm in the wrong political room. What makes you think you're in the wrong political room? We're all, what? We're, we're I think we're very kind of even. We're right in the middle here. I, I'm not I'm not pushing for one candidate over the other. Um, right now, all right. So newest newest batch of the political futures. Um, this is pretty current. Right now, Trump at 69, Biden at 49. Political futures markets. One more time. So right now, political futures have Trump at 69, Biden at 49. Wow. That's a huge change. Wow. That's wild. Wow. Um, please close the drawer. James, can you close the second drawer in your dresser? Oh, okay. Come on. Um, all right, guys. James is not listening. I want to know if he should do a shot. I got to know the comments. Should James do a shot? Should James do a shot? Here he comes. Uh, it's an amateur hour. You got to thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, you got to thank you on, uh, on the drawer. Uh, Mary says you should do a shot. Heather says you should do a shot for that. Debbie says shot. Dorothy says shot. Traveler Owl says shot. Heather, another Heather says shot. Wow, apparently the shot idea really took off here. Good All Lord, right. thank you for the jar comment. I'll be back um, in a second, pouring myself another shot because that's what the people have demanded. I'm meeting with a banker tomorrow at 9 a.m. It'll be an interesting one. Rosh and Miss uh, Ann Marine say a uh, shot. I'll be back in a sec. They say you need a chaser. Lisa says you, Lisa also says you need a shot. So it sounds like a shot is, uh, is very much called for. Uh, that's on James. That's on James. There's no shots here. Remember, we're just drinking beer. We're trying to be well behaved. Uh, we got the, the the Holy Spirit, and uh, we got uh, Santa Muerte here. So, uh, depending on what your political leanings are, and let them speak for you. Either way, the the flames are are taking the prayers north. We all need a shot. Yeah. Oh boy. All right. All right. Let's see the shot, James. And what is that? Seagram seven. Oh, okay. All right. Let's, it, it's let's it's up. punishing. All right. <laughs> Next door. Uh, the the shit strategy works. People will get what they want. The shot strategy works. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I can't keep. I I can't obey the uh, the will of the people for too much longer, though. Otherwise, I'll end up dead. Well, I, I think I think that's going to be the general trend is that you just continue to take shots if uh, if, if we're going to follow that. Uh, Kansas looks like it's leaning Trump. Kansas only six electoral votes. Kansas is a big place, man. Kansas is called for uh, Trump already. Uh, Kentucky, eight Kentucky. electoral votes going to Trump. Yep. Ohio is up on Trump. Ohio is up on Trump, but there's still 28 percent left to go. I mean, what is that? We gotta look at we gotta look at the, the breakdown. Can you pull up the Ohio breakdown? Yeah, man. You want me to? You want me to share screen? Yeah, I'd like to see that. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do that. All right. So, as expected, we're seeing the metropolitan areas are heavy. It's it's a big split between rural versus metropolitan. Um. So these two counties here are leaning Biden and they're undercounted. You, you're looking at a lot of undercounting in the- uh, But look at the red places that are undercounted. So, you see 98%, 91, 98. So the reds are all pretty heavily counted, whereas yeah. the blues are pretty undercounted. So Ohio could still swing back in Biden's favor, although I'd say it's not super- well, No, I'm favorite. seeing a lot of pink. I'm seeing a lot of pink there. Yeah, there. So, mm. Fairfield is is yeah. All right. Well, 
let's look. All right. Let's look at some other states that have a decent amount. So Florida, I'm just going to go ahead and call it. Florida's going for Trump unless there's a whole bunch of absentee ballots that change the narrative in the next day or two. Um, North Carolina has shifted towards Trump. That's surprising to me. Yeah. Georgia, only fifty percent. Like North Carolina. Let's see. Let's see what, what we've counted. Um, so one county hasn't reported at all. We got Raleigh at eighty-three percent. What was that big one? Go back to the big one. Go uh, three. Okay. Uh, oh, rally, rally is uh, rally is mostly Biden. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Um, what are the bigger counties there? So you're looking at like basically the Triangle area, which is going to be like Greensboro, Raleigh, Durham. Okay. And so like Durham County is obviously where Durham is, Raleigh, and then Greensboro is more in this area. Um, well, I, no, I'm, well, I'm, I'm stupid. Greensboro is there, like, because it says Greensboro. Um, okay. but it, but for some reason, I thought it was to the east, but, you know. But, and then you got a couple of counties bordering Greensboro that are Biden-flavored, blue, fl- blue raspberry-flavored. Yeah. So, this is going to be an important county because it hasn't even come in at all yet. And then, pretty much, so Raleigh... There's probably a good bit of Dem votes still waiting to be counted in Raleigh. Um, New Hanover County is where Wilmington is. You've been there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's wild that that's how that goes. All right, all right. I want to pull some stuff up, too. Uh, so let's let's drop our, our shared screen here. Um, us p- political correspondents here. Uh, I, w- I want to look at this map here on Twitter and see, see what the deal with that is. Um, you know, Twitter's dirty shit, man. I was in a I was in a shared cab right before coronavirus, and uh, I'm just watching the guy in front of me open uh, open up his Twitter, and uh, I was driving through Hell's Kitchen, and it was just all dicks. I just I'm looking at a whole bunch of dicks and the reflection on the window on his Twitter. I didn't realize Twitter was like on. Uh, uh, Twitter doesn't have any. You know, Instagram you can't post uh, naked people. We got Chelsea Handler here with her tits out. I didn't. I didn't realize. Uh, yeah, you get Chelsea Handler, James. You, I guess you can't see this here, but she's uh, she's all tits out. I'm not a huge fan of her, so I don't really care what her boobs look like. I think you're probably all right. Uh, she's, she's a little over your age range, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm just, I was trying to find that map, but. I can't. I can't seem to find it. Um, that's really too bad, actually. Uh, I wonder what Hillary Clinton's doing tonight. Uh, I would hope that she's drinking heavily. Well, we are. Just saw some pictures of Bill Clinton. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. U.S. elections. What is trending? Graphics. Everybody needs to know about the election before the polls close. The Electoral College explained uh, what to know about these six battleground states. That's what I want. I want to hit the battleground states. Um, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Florida, and Arizona. How's Arizona look? Can you, can you pull up your map real quick and find Arizona? Arizona might go Biden. Really? What, what's it looking like right now? I'll let you see. All right. You got the old Tucson, Tucson, Arizona there. Tucson, Arizona. Um, Phoenix blue. Oh, all right. All right. And then uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the other counties. I don't know Phoenix, Arizona really at all. But Phoenix is in what county? Maricopa. Maricopa. And what's below that? The Tucson's in? Pima. Pima, yeah, not something I'm familiar with. Oh, uh, all right, all right, all right. Cool. Cool. And then uh, you lost me there because let's – what what uh, Wisconsin. What's, Wisconsin is only 32%. Michigan's only at 32%. Mm-hmm. Wow. So Wisconsin, 32%. Michigan, 30%. 
it, there's there's just not enough data right now for us to be able to make much much assumptions. Well, thirty two percent, both of them. Uh, no, thirty thirty two and thirty uh, percent. That's kind of bullshit. Uh, but Florida at ninety four, Pennsylvania only at twenty six. Why why so low in these in the in in Pennsylvania? Well, that's a fantastic question that I really can't answer. One qu- one theory that I would have is that Pennsylvania probably had a considerable amount of early voting and whatnot. So they're probably saying, hey, we've got all these absentee ballots and mail-in votes and everything else, so we have to get through them. Boy, I just don't know. But my my latest refresh on the political futures, it's shifted heavily again. We are now Trump 80, Biden 35. What? Wild. Wild. Uh, let me hit some comments quick. If you guys are on TikTok, let me know what the comments are. Thank you for the present, Matt. That was very generous of you. I, I, I always like a, a nice uh, box. I don't know what to do with that. Is that, is that what that really is? Um, you guys should let me be Vanna White on, on juice, set like a steroidal Vanna White. Um, blue raspberry for me. Uh, you TikTok motherfuckers don't make any sense. You sound like Kanye West. Uh, what do you guys do for work? James is an accountant extraordinaire. Uh, I forgot your introduction. James, the Bosnian of Boswell, accountant extraordinaire, professional referee philosopher, bartender, what aren't you? You understand all aspects of life. You are the everyman. What am I not? Uh, I am not a dancer. And wallflower. Bartender, accountant, philosopher, referee, and wallflower. Is that um, what a wallflower is? Somebody that stays away from the dance floor? That's somebody that hugs a wall. Rosh, oh, where are you? Rosh, Rosh is here on the Upper East Side. Uh, who's the guy with the airport controller earphones? That's James, the Bosnator Boswell. Uh, sorry, Washington, check Seattle. We'll check Seattle in a minute. Uh, Rodolfo, are you single? No, I am not single. Uh, do not go. Rodolfo thinks you should go do some voiceovers. I will not go do some voiceovers. Uh, I would totally love to do voiceover work. I would have so much fun with that. Yeah, really? Oh, yeah. Uh, I just imagine myself in like Rocky two where he's trying to make money being a celebrity and like, he can't read. And he's like, I like this Cologne. It smell, it smells mainly. And I'm like, Oh fuck. Like obviously Rocky, Rocky Balboa can't read. If Rocky can't read I'm I'm really fucked. Um, um, let teach James to Jane dance a, t- a tango with a rose in his mouth. Uh-uh. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, so, the way I explain it to people is uh, I, I've, I've been awkward my entire life, and I've felt awkward and stupid plenty of times in my life, but never have I felt as awkward or stupid as the times that I've been forced to dance. I was at a Halloween party. It was uh, Saturday night. It was really a, a bit of a dance-off. I took some solace in the in the you know the fact that I was wearing a mask and that you know kind of you know helped me out a little bit. Plus uh, some pint some red solo cup pint glasses of scotch that helped a little bit too. Doesn't matter. I'll tell you a quick story. I was in Madrid, Spain, um, when I was studying abroad, and we did. Uh, I was studying in Bilbao. We took a trip to Madrid. The entire study abroad program. So there was probably about 30 or 40 of us Americans and we all had our hotel in Madrid. And so we do the, uh, the cultural activities during the day and then the night was kind of ours. So the second night that we were there, like we went out the first night too, but the second night that we were there before we even went out, I downed like probably two thirds of a bottle of scotch and then just went along with a group of probably like six or seven fellow Americans and to this day, if you were to ask me where in Madrid were you, I couldn't tell you. I, I have no idea where we went. And it's good that I was with the group because otherwise I would still be somewhere lost in Madrid. Um, but at one point in the night, 
we're in a bar and I just go up, I order my drink and one of the girls that was in our group or whatever, I'm just nursing my drink and she comes up to me and she's like, do you want to dance? And apparently I don't remember any of this because two thirds of a bottle of scotch plus continuing to drink. Gotcha. Um, apparently the way I reacted to her was as if she had asked me to murder a baby. Cause I'm like, no, 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 no. I won't do that. So the next day she comes up and she's like, you don't like dancing, do you? I was like, no, why do you say that? And she says, because the way you reacted to me last night was like, I asked you to do the most horrible thing imaginable. And well, all right, well, good job. Good job me for even drunk me well, being opposed to dancing. Cute. And it's not like she was ugly. She was cute, but I, I, I don't dance. That's a shame, man. That's a shame. I don't think James Bond is much of a dancer, actually. I don't know. Is James Bond, a, that's probably a good question for, uh, probably a good question for Rosh. I feel like Rosh is probably very well versed in the, in the Bond movies. Uh, I could be wrong on this. Oh, fuck. We're, we are running low on, uh, oh, shit. I think we just caught the whole Instagram live. Um, that's like, a, who's got a Basque flag? That's why you have a Basque flag? Yes. Yes, that's why I have a Basque flag. It um it keeps on falling down because the tape that I have holding it up keeps on failing. But yeah, um, Bilbao is in Pais Bosco, and they are wonderful people. It's a wonderful area. I have nothing but positive things to say about the Basque country. <laughs> um, I also had a comment that read that I should take the fact, I should take the soundbite where you say like, no, no, no to dancing. And turn <laughs> Do you know the last probably eight or ten of our podcasts have, have ended with you saying, um, uh, what, what, what is it, Bloom? Not Bloom Moon. Uh, oh, <laughs> sorry. The last eight or ten of our podcast ended with you going, I love PBR. I, lo I just love it. I've just been priced out. What? Oh, you, you guys have cut that one? <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that, was a, that was a good audio clip. That was a good audio clip. Uh, Rodolfo, uh, what are you getting at? Oh, as soon as they Costa Rica, hola, Katy, in Costa Rica, Costa Rica, Costa Rica. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've been drinking for a little while, and we're just going to keep going as this election rolls out. Um, I may get myself in some uh, some personal trouble, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, the, the election takes precedence here. Uh, James and I are vehicles of the people, and uh, we are here to please and and uh, and massage your political egos. Uh, we're closing in. We got an eight-point gap based off of what I'm seeing uh, on the electoral votes. The Senate at this hour. I don't know the Senate. Oh no, the Senate is eight electoral votes apart. I guess. Does, does the Senate vote in electoral? No, no, no. The Senate's just popular vote by the state. <laughs> What I thought that was a yeah I guess that was a percentage percentage difference and um, it's 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 wild that the popular vote is still not a thing. The electoral college is fucking stupid. It made sense back in 1787 when it took three weeks for them to even be able to bring the election votes to Washington to count. Um, for electricity, by the way. Oh yeah yeah uh, electricity didn't come around for like another seventy years. But at, at this point, why in the, the Electoral College so gr drastically distorts our map and it makes it so that there are a large number of states, both Democrat and Republican, that don't really matter. Neither Biden nor Trump cal uh, campaign in California or New York. Why? Because those states were 100% going to go their way. Same deal with North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, South Carolina, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. Like, those are all reliably Republican states. They didn't campaign here at all. Why? Because the votes were already going to go one way or the other. If you had a national popular vote, then they would have to campaign everywhere because they want to try and get as many votes as they can. It, like, I, I get that the Electoral College is written into the Constitution, but we can fix that. But we can either do a constitutional amendment or oh, amendment is that a thing what's, what's amendment an amendment? In the constitution what, what, what is that um what please tell me you're saying? being you're you're playing dumb here 
Well, no, I'm just, we can change things. We, we can change the, the constitution and we've done it like 17 times. <laughs> I'm joking. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, yeah. The, the electoral college is, is, is really stupid and it very much warps our national, our, our national political landscape and it needs to go. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I think that's, I think that's fucking wild. Um, that it's something that's still around and for the reason that it, it existed to begin with, it doesn't really make much sense of the day and the era of technology. However, yeah, I feel what, like what made effort, sense in 1787 sure as shit does not make sense today. Uh, James, I see you keep eyeballing that tie. Because I spilled beer on it. I'm worried that I like, stained it. Yes. I noticed that you can wear a tie for years with stains all over it. Nobody seems to point anything out. Yeah, but it matters to me. Uh, I wore a tie the other day, beautiful, like, royal, regal, purple tie. Um, nobody said shit. Everybody gave me compliments on the tie all day. I got home. I didn't go out drinking or anything. I didn't even go out to dinner. And I pulled that thing off. And there are stains all up and down the tie. And guess what? I have no intention of dry cleaning it. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, I actually, when I, uh, when I work for the, uh, so for those of you who don't know this, when I moved to South Carolina, James and I moved. Um, when we originally went down to South Carolina, I didn't have a plan to move to South Carolina. I went down with James. He was looking to move to the South. And we, last minute impromptu chose South Carolina over North Carolina because it was one state warmer. Either way, I was keeping James company and we enjoyed ourselves in South Carolina. It was actually an incredible trip, um, like really, really fun. And I just decided to leave Albany along with James. We went down, we rented an apartment. Um, and uh, I didn't have a job. And I did not know what I was going to do. So I moved down with no job and zero prospects of a job. So I went on Craigslist every single day. I filled out a gazillion and one um, employment applications. I dropped my resume off at a gazillion places. It was a short amount of time. I was doing some pickup work for a psychic slash gypsy on James Island, uh, which is near Folly Beach. Um, and uh, the guy, the guy was pretty successful as a as a psychic. Obviously, he probably made mostly cash. But a really good guy. It was my job to manicure his lawn and detail his Mercedes. Um, but a good guy. He, he he really didn't like crack down on me. You know, I, I have a lot of attention to detail, probably more so than he did because you know, I'm a bit OCD. But um, but he paid me. And he knew I did such a great job. He gifted me certain clothing items. And um, that included some very expensive, very nice designer ties and designer shirts uh, because the shirts didn't fit him any longer and the ties he just never wore. So I actually ended up with some very, very nice ties, one of which had a stain on it. And he gave it to me with a stain on it. He said he wore it once and got a stain on it. Uh, but he doesn't ever wear a tie, so I can just have it. And I put it in, uh, in the washing machine. James, you heard me on that? About you, you put the ties in the washing yeah, machine? Uh, I put like a $250 tie in the washing machine. Thinking, How'd that go? Thinking once it came out of the washing machine, I could, I could get the, you know, the, the kind of fabricing right and uh, get everything back in order and just iron it dry and it'd be cool. I'm going to guess that didn't work out. Nah, and it was a, it was a really, really nice tie. Uh, some type of silk type blend. Um, and I wore a lot of nice ties, but I just remember destroying that. I wear nice ties now. Back then, I, I did not. Uh, I destroyed the hell out of that one. Back then, my, my specialty was the $19 Paisley tie from uh, Dillard's. Yo, I love Paisley ties. I think, are, you, are you wearing a Paisley tie right now? Yeah, nice. I was going to wear a, a blue paisley tie, but, you know, it's just a bit funky. Uh, what's up? Andreas, uh, I think you should build a home tiki bar together. Let's not forget <laughs> Yo, let me, let me take a quick break to hit the bathroom. 
Uh, so the two I, shots and two beers are starting to have their effect. Andres, I got a message to relay to you. Uh, Andres, uh, give me a thumbs up if you're there, if you're still there. I don't want to relay the message to everybody because it's not, you know, maybe the, the nicest message. If you're there, uh, you know, hit me with uh, the comment. If not, we'll assume you left. Uh, yeah. Uh, we got Isomer saying, Andres, shots, shots, shots. Andres, this is from the sauce. She wanted to relay this, which is not a finger up, it's a thumbs up. Um, all right, guys, we're looking at 98 electoral towards Biden, 92 towards Trump. Trump is closing the gap right now. We got 348 uncalled. This is a race to 270. Uh, that's the number. So uh, Rosh is asking, hey, uh, Delis, ¿cómo está? Delis, where are you from? Are you born in 83? Is that the 83 tag? Is that why well, you got that on there? Uh, thank you, Christopher. My 9 a.m. appointment is going to look interesting. Yeah, I got a lot of appointments tomorrow, actually. Uh, Maria, Mariah, Maria, uh, hola de San Diego. Uh, hey, in San Diego, happy to join us. Uh, thank you, Christopher, for that. Uh, all right, we're looking at Georgia, Trump leaning by 400,000 votes, 350,000 votes. That's pretty heavy. That's pretty heavy. They're saying too early to call, but I mean, I don't think they're going to count all these mail-ins uh, tonight. Damn sauce, where's the love, question mark? Uh, day list from Miami. St. Judas, Taito, Candles, yeah, that's St. Jude. Uh, he is, he's up and burning over here. Uh, St. Jude, I think, is a guy you bury upside down because you lost something, like your dignity. I don't know. You're supposed to bury that guy every time you lose your dignity. Sus. Yeah. You, you, uh, is what you're to or no? Yeah, yeah. All right, what did I miss? You missed the recommendation on the next drink. Which is? Um, that's up in the air, actually. The, the recommendation was just there needs to be another drink. I'm drinking beer. You're drinking air. Um, sauce well, is drinking beer. nothing over here. Sauce is drinking nothing. It looks empty. Sauce. No, really? All right. I got an old-fashioned man called for. Show. So I got to, as the, as the resident bartender, do I do another old fashioned or do I do another blue old fashioned? All right, actually, anybody is watching. So let's let's see where we look. TikTok. Uh, all right, so we got a few dozen between between the two platforms. Uh, it looks like Facebook uh, kind of leveled off here. So we got we got about three dozen between, which is low actually for a Tuesday night. But we've been going for two and a half hours now. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so, do we do a red old fashioned or a blue old fashioned? Go red since you did blue last time. Not up to you. You are a participant. You are a pawn, James. You and me are pawns. Hmm. All right, we do a red old fashioned or a blue old fashioned? All right, it, it seems to be more uh, internal dialogue between people who are watching this. Uh, and we got Kristen Walker here. And we got a blue old fashioned, blue old fashioned, blue old fashioned. Somebody just said red. Uh, so a regular old fashioned, high from Georgia. Blue old fashioned in Georgia. Um, uh, thank you, Empress. Is that like a marijuana type, like Empress? Like the Empress of marijuana, the Empress? You, you high right now, Empress? Um, uh, Lisa says blue. All right, Dolfo says red. Uh, so we're like 50 50 right now. You guys, you guys got to double down. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to toss these current orange peels because that's kind of gross. They're like saturated with uh, with liquor right now. Uh, all right, guys, I'm gonna start making this. Nobody's gonna tell me which way to go. We're just gonna see how it turns out. Pink. Pink is not an option. Blue, red. I'm not high, no. Uh, Hempress, how are you not high? Hempress. 
How does that work? Um, all right, so we're even. We're blue, red. Like the last comment on one platform is blue. The other platform is red. We got another blue. Now we're leaning blue. No mouth. No mouth. All right. Uh, all right, we're leaning towards the normal, which is an orangey hue of goodness. Uh, hopefully this has no, no effect for the recipient on the election, because that would be sad for the recipient. Really, you know, I don't know, I guess uh, Cindy says Trump 2020, got another Daisy Alice is saying, uh, Red also, all right, the, the sugar, the sugar train, the cocaine train here, all right. I like to do brown sugar. Brown, brown sugar. sugar is good. Sugar. I like making brown sugar simple syrups. Oh yeah, because you get that more of the molasses -y. Ooh, maybe, maybe my next drink might be a little rum, rum and lime, or maybe just straight rum. Nice. Um, always add lime. Lime n almost never makes anything worse. The only time that you don't want to mix lime is if you've got um, any kind of a uh, dairy ingredient going along with it. No, of course, unless you want. What's that one like? The brain shot. What's that one called? Um, it's a curdled. It's a cur It's like a. It's it's like the brain is the name of the. It's the name of the, the drink. I'm looking at zombie brain or yeah, brain I hemorrhage. No. Ohio Trump leaning 52 versus 46. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's, it's like 52 to 47, really. Yeah, I just got a quick highlight there. All right, so we are on the, uh, the bitters. The bitters. All right, in the meantime, I'm going to throw some ice down here. It's got a nice maroon hue it's a shame if you are a left wingist really sorry about that i had nothing to do with it i'm gonna hit the beer next because uh I'm trying to take it easy it is a tuesday night after all although we may not open tomorrow and it doesn't matter my job i mean we can do it <laughs> they still want me in the office tomorrow but uh i worked hungover today if i have to i can work hungover tomorrow grab the sand I uh, have to take a little break towards the little boys' room here. Well, before you do, give me something to some bullshit to spout off to the people. I want to. I want to hit the uh, most contested states, really. Uh, but hang tight. I'm gonna. Let me do some research before you do, because there's a whole bunch of other. So, here's a here's something important. Ohio so and Pennsylvania are really my concern right now. Okay, so Pennsylvania, um, there are 2.2 million mail ballots still to be counted in Pennsylvania. So there's a lot that can still change there. Um, right now, political futures markets have Trump at 74, Biden at 33. So there's a lot of volatility in the futures markets, as would be expected. But, uh, boy, I'm looking at the states. Let me, let me share screen for you real quick so I, you can see the, uh, the political futures um, projection. Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move these cameras. I'm going to move these cameras right now so the shared screen works a little better. I'll be right back. I'll let you, I'll let you tag on those. All right. So the political futures markets – are speaking pretty strongly right now, where much to my surprise, I thought North Carolina was going to go Democrat, but the political futures are, are, are going Republican there. Um, Florida, as I already said, likely to go Republican, but and the futures markets agree. Pennsylvania is up in the air, but futures markets are leaning Republican. Same thing with Michigan and, and uh, Wisconsin. Minnesota is going Democrat, but it's unsure. So right now, if we look here, 248 guaranteed, according to the futures, to 203. And 
right now there's another 80 that are left and they're saying 46 or so is likely to go Republican. So there's a huge shift where Biden's dropped his chances by at least 50% and Trump has seen his chances double effectively. And I mean, I'm pretty surprised by this. They're even going Ohio 96% on the Republican side, which is surprising to me. I think that it's going to be closer than that. If we look at the actual electoral map, if I can find it. Oh, there she is. All right. So we're looking at 93%. Trump is ahead by about 1% in North Carolina at 93% counted. I don't know what the mail-in ballot situation is in North Carolina, but I don't know. Maybe the political futures markets know something that I don't for North Carolina. Ohio's or close. Ballot red right through the center of the country, which I tell people on a regular basis. The U.S. isn't New York and California. Nope. The U.S. isn't the people that you know, which obviously I'm talking to people I know. Um, I'm talking about the fact, I mean, look at the map that you just showed. Look at that map that you just showed. You want me to share it again? No, 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 because I got to adjust the cameras again. Uh, I'm actually running pretty low on the Instagram live. I'm, 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 I'm at under 10% in terms of battery, so... Uh, if you guys are following us now and you want to stay tuned, you've got to hit me on Facebook because Facebook's the only thing right now with a solid, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, power cord. Huh. <laughs> the rest of it, I think, uh, I, I think the rest of what we're looking at power cord wise is, uh, is not looking too strong. And, and I'm actually, I'm in talks with my brother right now about going in on a place in the Caribbean. Really? I, I'm dead serious. We're looking at, uh, in St. Patrick's. Oh, St. Patrick. Hastings? Of Hastings? Yeah. yeah. St. Patrick's Granada. A three-bedroom house for $450,000. Cancel this out. How much? Four hundred and fifty thousand. Oh, I'll send you the link, or I can just screen share it. You could. You could. Yeah, let me just do that. Um, if you slip off that tie and then get high, was it a riddle? Um, charge you hit me in with a new charger, please. That's a what? You see in the screen? Oh yeah, it's a nice place. It looks like a crazy view. I hope it's close to the airport. Oh my God. Um, I'm in. Yeah. Hey, it's three bedrooms. Me, my brother, and you. You want in? Uh, I may. I may, for real. Uh, what country was this one in? Granada. Uh, can I get a job over there? Oh, where is Granada? All right, let's uh, get a map. Well, yeah, hit the map and then and then zoom out. It's south of St. Lucia, uh, oh. west of Barbados. Yeah, man, that's far. It's close to Trinidad and Tobago. Tobago. Yeah, which is a place that I uh, I already pimped out. I already said Trinidad was a good one. I was thinking Cayman Islands maybe, but yo, Granada looks pretty nice. And uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a hit DR though. I don't know what what's the language in uh, Granada. Good question. Good question. St. Patrick, Saint, it's got to be English or Spanish. Yeah. Um, so we're still hitting the breaking news here. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta kill my Alexa uh, to stay to stay online here. We are hitting a long ass cast, so I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep us live, you guys. I'm gonna keep all you guys live. Um, uh, I appreciate you all joining us. Uh, Rodolfo, Rush, I, I somewhere, Republic of Dominicana fan, Evan, uh, it's cool to have you guys with us. English know. is the official language of Granada. Wow, what's the most popular language in Granada? This is a cast that's going late as shit. I actually, I never expected it to be, if you guys are still listening, look, 
if you guys are still listening and you don't subscribe on YouTube, come on, come on. Or at the very least, you, know, you subscribe, we'll be happy for that. Uh, you hit us on the audio podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, anywhere else, I'll be forever grateful, really. And if you give us a like and a good review or even some comments, dude, we're like, you know, that's going to make us some happy people, all right? So if you're live, do me a favor, take a second, go off, hit YouTube, hit Apple Podcasts, hit Spotify, search Sip Talk, you will find us. You will find James and I, it's a badass logo. Um, and uh, subscribe, all right? Also, if you watch anything on YouTube, you watch anything on the podcast, the audio podcast, you listen to the audio podcast, we got some killer links. <laughs> we got a, we got an option to get some free stocks just on sign up. That's through Weeble. Um, I've actually made a decent amount of money through Weeble. I think I, my, my initial investment was low as shit. Um, and it's in like the 2000 range, maybe 3000 range right now on Weeble. Well, I mean, I guess obviously everything depends right now on, um, on the election. Um, what else we have? What else we have in the links? We got the Amazon. So if you if you happen to see the the background of my office, anything that's for sale in my anything that's in my office that is sold on Amazon is linked to the office. It's got some badass stuff. It's got the gramophone. It's got some cool artwork. It's got some weird ass office shit. It's all on Amazon. We got the American Express Platinum affiliate program where you get like a gazillion uh, travel points on the Amex Platinum. And it's actually pretty easy to qualify. So if you guys are listening right now, you let me know what your credit is. If like, you don't think you qualify for the platinum, shoot me a text, uh, shoot me an email, and uh, you know we can talk credit cards. I'll just give you my solid advice, even if it's one we don't have an affiliate program for. I will give you my best advice when it comes to credit. If you gotta clean up your credit, I will work with you on that. Uh, I'm not expecting a dime. I'll just give you a good direction. And if it's beyond me, I will help you sign up with somebody who is a credit repair specialist. Um, one of my colleagues, Brian Rennie, great credit repair specialist. So either way, I got your back. So, uh, so check us out. Like, comment, subscribe. Either way, take some action. I mean, James and I have been on, on air right now, uh, coming up on three hours. And, uh, you know, that's backbreaking. Uh, minus the drinks. So I'm about to make another drink. Um, uh, thank you, Evan. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Rodolfo. Badass logo on Sip Talk. Rosh, Rosh will take – James, you've seen the Sip Talk logo, right? Uh, maybe. Got to cue up the memory here. Tell me the Sip Talk logo is not, is not badass. Getting there. Hold on. So, hold on. Uh, all right, let's go with this. All right. So is you, that the picture with you with the drink in the hand? Yeah, yeah. That's the. That's a black and white picture. Um, Needs more hair. All right. Well, maybe maybe sick sick to our uh, uh, logo number two you may be able to participate in that one. Mm. Uh, if you're local, if you're local, the beauty we have of Sip Talk is that you and I can have a conversation. Uh, what are we, 900 miles apart? Approximately. Yeah, roughly nine, 950 or something like that. Uh, I would know, uh, because I've made that drive a few dozen times, a lot of times, and uh, it's a long drive. It is. It's a shorter drive if you go really, really, really fast. That's typically how things work. Yeah. Remember that time I had to drive from South Carolina to New York in this giant blizzard where you got like two and a half feet? Uh, I wasn't there for the drive. Well, no, you weren't there for the drive. I don't know if you remember. I left I left on like a Friday night at like 8 o'clock from South Carolina, drove to Astoria, Queens. And uh, uh, I mean, at times... I would say there was eight inches of snow on the highway. Yeah, it's not fun. And I was doing about 80 miles an hour in a Volkswagen Beetle where I could. What were you – was that a rental? It was a rental car, and it had a temporary plate. And the temporary plate in South Carolina legally 
was like a piece of cardboard that had the word like enterprise for the rental company, enterprise like template written in marker, written in Sharpie. So you, you're basically just like sending up like a signal flare of pull me over. Well, not in a fucking blizzard. And I just remember driving and like there were, there, there would be like the, what would happen was you would notice, cause I was, there were plows in the road and the plows were stacked like four deep, like with shoulder to shoulder. Uh, right. So like, yeah, like plow one shunts it to plow two and they get it all off the ground. Yeah. But I would notice that like it would, you know, it was getting higher and higher up until it got to like three, four, five, six inches. And then it would slowly taper off. And that meant that I was on the trail of some recent plows. Mm -hmm. And as I would approach those plows, the level of snow would go down and down and down. And then I would pass those plows and it would go instantly up. Well, yeah, that's to be expected. Obviously, passing the plows is a bit of a very dangerous challenge. But for the most part, I was driving straight, fast. And... My biggest concern was like drifting at 70, 80 miles an hour around turns. You know, there are yeah. gentle turns. I was on I-95. Yeah. But were then you I was getting it loose around the bends? And I was in an all-wheel drive vehicle. Yeah, I would lose. I would, I would basically just, you kind of hit a vector and you, and you like, your momentum, your momentum carrier carries you through that vector. So like... Like no matter what, like you 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 lose trend, uh, you lose traction on a vector, and like that's the way you go. Right. Until until like you shift it back into neutral, you let the tires take over, and then. The well, tires... if you're in an all-wheel drive vehicle, you can counter steer and put some power through uh, all four wheels and just get the car moving back in the turn. And if there's any type of vehicle to be in in a snowstorm, that that. Uh, Volkswagen Beetle was actually a really, really good one. It was a fun one to drive. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, it was dangerous and it was scary and I was also going for speed. So, you know, really the scare factor was, was the biggest one. But that was like a 12 hour drive where I arrived at like 7.45 in the morning. So you uh, made it to New York in 12 hours through a blizzard? Yeah, and I had that's impressive. Heavy ass blizzard. And then when I got here, the plate had fallen off. And I was so freaked out because I was like, oh, they're going to tow the car. There's no fucking plates in the car. It's parked in Queens. But there's, there's, there was so much snow that um, the, the whole car was covered like f another foot and a half of snow on top of it. So it never became an issue. And then I had to turn around and drive back home to South Carolina. And I just drove, I drove yeah. from New York to South Carolina. Yeah. So no you sent one signal flare up to, to, to get yourself pulled over on the way up. And then you like double barreled it to signal flare to like get pulled over on the way down. All right, guys, uh, we gotta, we gotta hit some uh, political shit because we, we lost about 50% on Twitter. You guys are not Twitter. What do you call this? Uh, TikTok. TikTok. If you guys are watching on TikTok, hang tight, hang tight. TikTok, very important. Um, we love you guys on TikTok. We're going to hit you with some political shit right now. Some may be over your head. Some may not. Either way, we got, uh, we got NBC in the background. James, hit me with some Fox. I want to know what's going on on Fox. Uh, I'm not watching Fox right now. I got the NBC feed up. You want me to do the Fox newscast? Oh, yeah. Hit me on the Fox, man. Uh, all right. Hold on. All right, 2020 election, Fox News. All right, what we got? Oh, fucking ads, great. All right, TikTok, hang tight, hang tight. Uh, I'm waiting for my political futures markets to refresh, by the way. Biden's looking to win Arizona right now. It's pretty likely. Well, it uh, looks like uh, Alexandria Ocasio, or, or, Coltre, Alexandra, Alexandria yeah. Ocasio-Cortez. AOC solidified her re-election, which is crushing my business day by day. All right. Trump is now at 65. Biden's at 34. So, as I said, lots of volatility in the uh, – uh, I'm going to make a new drink. I'm going to make a new drink. Uh, just get me a cucumber stiletto. What is that? Is that a sexual thing? That's probably just a cucumber spear. 
Uh, Raj says. Uh, oh, cucumber stiletto, cucumber martini, basically. You're gonna be looking at uh, like citrus vodka, Saint Germain, lime, simple syrup, cucumber, mint. Actually, looks yeah, pretty good. That's not a martini. But, um, no, but it's served in a martini glass. But yeah. that looks like a pretty decent drink, actually. I like a martini in a pint glass. <laughs> I'll, I'll take my martini in the Yahtzee shaker. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, yeah, fair enough. You know, you know our friend, our old internet friend, uh, since we were fourteen, Jillian. Oh, what's she up to? I beats me. It's been a while. But Jillian's a big, uh, big, 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 big time. Uh, what do you call it? Hendrix Martini. Oh, Hendrix, Hendrix is good gin. Um, I just don't dirty, like dirty Hendrix, which is which is a tough thing to mix with Hendrix, in my opinion, because Hendrix is very juniper, you know, uh, very complex gin. Yeah, it is. And then when you dirty it up, like I feel like you're you're kind of messing with the that juniper flavor. Yeah. Uh, but but her, her and I've slugged down quite a few of those. Well, and, uh, tell her that uh, there's a there's a free bedroom in Granada if she's interested. Uh, I will I will relay the message. Um, all right, Wyoming, Donald Trump, projected winner. Yeah, I, that's yeah. Not, not a surprise. Wyoming. Uh, all right, I got to make another drink. James, you need another drink. What's it going to be? It's going to be another beer because that's all I got. Unless the. Uh... Unless the peoples want me to take another shot, but that's probably the last shot that I can stomach before I, I eventually call it for the night. All right. So you guys, uh, James, James proposition, you guys. Your last... Are you making another drink? I'm, yeah, I'm asking. You want to do another drink? Do yeah, I, well, I can get one more beer. Um, while you're making your next drink or whatever, I'm probably going to hit the bathroom real quick. Uh, no, there's no peeing allowed. This is sip talk. Um, I mean, I don't have a toilet seat yet. I haven't reached that quite, quite those levels of uh, like video game nerddom where I have a toilet seat, so I don't even have to leave my bedroom to continue playing video games. And that 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 point is never going to happen. By the way, uh, you lost me on that. Somehow you didn't have a butthole, and now you do have a butthole. No, the, uh, the whole the, what I'm saying is like, I don't know. It's a it's a stereotype or and I like a, a trope that people that are super into video games will have like a video gaming seat that also has a toilet in it so that they don't have to leave. I have uh, not reached that point. All right. And, well, nor I'll, will I ever. I'll be back in 30 seconds, guys. All right. Well, I'll be here hitting the tequila, um, doing a little tequila sour, which is a margarita. Um, you guys think James should have a shot? I want, uh, I want the Grenada crib. Invite me or you Biden or Trump. Uh, Lisa's laughing. We got Mina Alexa with a typo. Uh, Justin, thank you for that, Mina. Uh, either way, we are doing our best to keep you guys updated with the Electoral College, with the popular vote. It's way early. Uh, it's 11 o'clock Eastern time, 11 p.m. Eastern time. I feel like we might be on here for another hour or so. I feel like the majority of the country is going to be way too early to call. Um, if you are a Trump fan, I have a sneaking suspicion it looks good for you. If you're a Biden fan, a Biden fan you better have your fingers crossed. Um, there's a lot of states that are way too early, early to call. Um, and those states are states that are really going to make it, really going to make an impact on the Electoral College. So stay tuned. We're going to keep you guys updated. There's really nothing better going on in the news. So if you're here with us, if you have a drink, you're in a better place. I promise you. Tell me what shit's going on in your life, and uh, I will do my best to walk you through it. But really, I want to know some crazy shit that's going on with you guys. Um, because I don't have much crazy shit going on in my life. I live a, I live a pretty, vi pretty very good life. I'm very well taken care of. My life is not drama filled um so i want to know what's going on with you guys i want to help you guys with that james is about to throw some headphones on um here he is james you've got some headphones on and what i was saying is that my life is very good there's not a lot of drama if somebody has drama in their life i want to know what happened somebody just said i missed new york which is 
your problem. You left New York. Why the fuck would you leave New York? Um, you're leaving New York. I am leaving New York. I don't miss New York. <laughs> but born queen with uh, two E's, two threes in the place, the E's on queen, Mrs. New York. I'm starting my new job tomorrow. Gerald Quell 13, I wish you the best of luck in your first day. Positive vibe, vibes only. Thank you. Uh, Rosh says, uh, the comments say, Rosh is telling me the comments say you need to take a shot. I'm going to confirm that with the comments. Um, uh, Evan says, James should be driving a Lamborghini. Um, um, yeah, that, that's the dream someday, but uh, it's a little... I'm priced out of PBR, let alone a Lamborghini, so. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Got to save up for that property in Granada, apparently. Well, you have to save that much, right? It's pretty cheap. 350000 I don't know if they, that qualifies as cheap in your book. It doesn't in uh, mine. By my book, I got so much time to pay off my, uh, my EIDL loan. So, you know, you pay off your property, I pay off my EIDL. I lose money every month. You have a job, so you know, break even, right? Uh, I'm hoping that uh, maybe my firm will be uh, super charitable to me and allow me to work remote from Granada. I think at this point, you, you, super charitable means they're going to make you a fucking partner, man. Uh, you, you better be praying for that corona down there. Uh, I'm that pretty was low on the list. Mean. Don't pray for that. That's bad. Right now. That's bad. That was got to so get that CPA fun. license first. Well, I think it's going to happen. Did you pass your driver's test first time around? Of course. Okay, all right, all right. Man, that's driver's test is a little bit tougher than the driver's test. Yeah, sure. But, I mean, it, that's one is physical skills. The other one is, is pure mental knowledge. Um, dude, do you remember when I got my license? Like, that was a big deal. That was a big deal for both of us. For both of us when I got my, I, I got my first, right? Yes, you you – it was a big deal for both of us, both when you got your license and also when I also got my license. I remember, I remember when you got your license, it was like relieving for me because we were hanging out a lot at the time with Eric and, uh, and Joey. Uh, Eric took forever to get his license. Oh uh, yeah. Well, and he was older than we were. Yep. So, uh, but it was, it was, it was very relieving when you got yours because basically it just, you know, the fuel cost for me was, was pretty high. <laughs> so, and back at that time, you know, I don't know if we had jobs. I think we had bullshit jobs. Like part-time stuff, little little things here and there. I remember, like, that, that one year that we worked uh, for Matt Ryan doing apartments and stuff like that. That's where the technology comes in. Technology. Do you want to retell that story? I know. I know. I wasn't there. Me. You were the one who I know it's it. me. I know it's me firsthand, but maybe you could tell it because cryptology is part of my lexicon these days. It, it, it's a great word. It, it, um, well, I guess I'll tell the story from Justin's perspective. So we worked for um, our wrestling coach for a summer, and he had a whole bunch of rental properties in the downtown Albany area. And so what he paid us to do is when people left these apartments, he would have us go in clean them up, clean them out, and then, you know, put a fresh coat of paint on them and just make them nicer to rent for whoever the next tenant was going to be. And he wasn't necessarily uh, renting to the best and the brightest of society. We'll just say that. And well, he, it was, he was a swan He was a swan Right. That, that, uh, I was backing into that. Anyways, so Justin's there with Matt and – Matt's having some dispute with a tenant where the tenant is trying to say that Matt's trying to pull something over on him. And he probably wasn't, but. Uh, his rent was due. His rent was due. End of story. Okay. And so the, the tenant gets all mad because Matt's using proper English and like legalistic terms or whatever. And the tenant's like, look, man, I see where you're going with this one. Don't try and like pull any of this trick knowledge on me. I know where things stand. Yeah, the guy basically, you know, Matt was speaking in kind of logistical, like, it's April, April 7th. You haven't paid me since the beginning of March. You owe me April rent. And the guy's like, why, what, you know, why are you pulling this confusing shit? <laughs> yeah, but the, the word trick-knowledy. Mm. 
but the guy kind of pulled out of his ass. He's like, this is some technology. And basically those of us in observance lost our shit. And we were like, like, cause we were observing the conversation. We were like, this guy was kind of arguing the fact that like he paid last month and this month was due, but they had nothing to do with last month. Yeah. And then the wrestling coach was arguing that our, our boss was arguing that this month is due. End of story. Uh, so it was, it was really a confusing discussion. Illinois projected winner, Biden. Arizona looks like, wait, wait, wait. I don't know if I read that right. Indiana, no, Indiana saying projected Trump. Yeah, definitely. We've got to go by Associated Press, though. I don't, I don't really know what I'm looking I, I'm running with the New York Times because the New York Times seems to be pretty accurate. And the, and the, the AP is going to be basically using the same numbers as New York Times. I'm not – like, New York Times isn't projecting anything. I'm just looking at the numbers, and I like the way that their map presents. New York Times – I like the New York Times map, actually. I, I, don't have, I don't have anywhere I can use it interactively. But I definitely – California, obviously, 55 electoral votes going to Biden, but we don't know how, how far north that's going to get him. Uh, no, it, the California doesn't matter. That was always factored in. Albany is nice. I used to live there. Cheers, Evan. I love real estate. I didn't pass my state test. I need a mentor. Um, you need a study guide. You need some practice tests, actually. Uh, hello from Georgia. Um, let me hit some more comments. Um, I love the comments, as you guys know, so keep them coming. They're not paying attention to our, our comments. Uh, Millie, are you? I am. I am. Justin, what's the meaning of your candles? Um, born queen. The meaning of my candles is basically I love Mexican culture. I love tequila and mezcal. So really, honestly, they're mostly props. I grew up super Catholic, so like I identify certain things in life with the saints. Um, but I just love kind of the culture and the tradition that comes in all these candles, uh, these prayer candles. Uh, do you celebrate Dia de los Muertes? I don't, but dude, I fucking wish I could. Um, what are we drinking right now? I'm drinking a blue margarita. Seems to be the drink of the night. I got some red, uh, uh, what do you call it? A red, uh, the, what do you call it? The salt ring? Yeah. And that's salt and sugar, uh, which is incredible. Oh, man, I wish I could serve this drink to somebody who liked tequila. I wish I could serve this drink to somebody who liked tequila, but unfortunately, I don't know that many people that like tequila, and, uh, you know, sorry about that, everybody. Um, greetings from Buenos Aires. Hola, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, I'm having champagne. Cheers. Cheers to you, Evan. Um, but, uh, oh my God, I love tequila. This is tequila Espelon. Um, this is a, a Niejo, I think. Probably a Reposado. Rep or, uh, yeah, Reposado. Called it. Yeah, well, okay. Well, you saw the bottle before also. I also showed it in the. Yeah, but I didn't need to see the bottle. I could just tell by the color. You already saw the bottle, so it was, it was implanted. Yeah, but I didn't read the bottle. I just looked at the color of it, and I was like, yeah, that's probably a rip Yeah, well, yeah, but you saw the color before I put it out of the fridge. Still uh, called it. Don't shit on my bartender chops. And then I got my winter beers. They are red cans. We will see how this the. Yeah, uh, my metal straw come. from the honey pot. Honeywell. Honeywell, close enough. My metal straw from the Honeywell would like to have a word with you. Oh, yeah? What do, what do I want to say? Um, something, something. Boswell knows this shit about bartending. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I didn't know you would use that as a, I'm a bartender. Bartenders give me free shit type of dildo thing. I didn't even, I didn't ask for it. No, it was good. I just remember, we, um, yeah, I remember we were at the bar. We got that crazy lady kicked out, and oh, then, the, yeah, that's a different story. But then Honeywell closed down, so we went next door, and then the bartenders from the Honeywell came next door for their after after their uh, shift drink, and they saw me there. They pointed me out, and I went over and talked to them. Like, yo, man, we got this for you. Like, you were great. I was like, you guys are awesome. Thank you. 
And I come back to you. I was like, look at this. Look at look, look, look who I got. And you're like, I, oh, I have I, never. So I, I would love to do a future podcast on how to be a bar rake. Right. How to be, how to. Apparently, I did being a bar regular better than you did in one night. Yeah, I know, but now I'm studying the science of being a regular. So, because I'm not good at it. I was a regular at a bar in Uptown Manhattan in Harlem for four or five years. I never got a free drink. I got very little recognition. I just went there. I paid full price. I drank. I tipped, and I tipped well, and I left. And then I met some friends in the neighborhood and we became known at the bar and and then I was recognized as a regular. You want me to give you the first tip? Only as of them. Oh, I mean, I, I, I know it now, but I'm curious, what is your first tip? Engage with the bartending staff. But that's a tricky one because bartending staff typically very busy and the people that try hard to engage them are typically seen as people that they want to avoid. So, for example, the night in the Honeywell, why did they single me out? When One, because, because when we hang out together, we hang out at a bar especially, we have fucking incredible conversation and everybody wants to be involved. Usually, true. Because, usually because it's very spirited. True, but... Why did they single me out over you or Adam? Because you're the tallest. And I have the hair. Yeah, probably. That's not why they singled me out. The reason that they singled me out was that I picked my times to start conversations with the bartenders. So one thing that you need to do, and if you haven't worked in food and Bev, this is a little bit harder to, to, to discern, but Whenever I go into a bar now, after having worked as a bartender for like three plus years, is one, one thing that I love doing is observing the workflow and seeing how, how the restaurant is organized and the delegation of duties. And I can tell within about under five minutes, usually between one and two minutes, whether or not the bar or restaurant is well run just by the way that the staff inter racks and the way that orders and everything get processed so the hunting well for example very well organized and so once it, when you're dealing with a well-organized bar you can quickly determine when the bartenders have a moment to breathe and then based on how you're observing the bartenders if they've got a moment to breathe that's when you can make some kind of an interjection and and make a comment about a cocktail that they're making and say, Hey man, I'm seeing that you're like, you're mixing blah, blah, blah with blah, blah, blah. I've never tried that before. That sounds like a really interesting combination. So you got to comment on the drinks and their craft and, and give them both props that you recognize that they know what they're doing and they're doing a good job, but that you also have some understanding as to what's going into it. And then throw in some kind of other comment about like other interesting drink ideas or whatever. But I, 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 you have to pick your moments because if they're busy, they don't want to, they don't want to talk to you. Like, yo man, I love that you're talking to me right now, but like I'm in the weeds right now. So just give me a sec. I completely disagree. I mean, actually I, I agree in 30, 35% of it. Well, you should agree with a hundred percent of it because I'm talking from experience. So am I. You, have you bartended before? I've been to a lot more bars than you. You, you may have, but have you, how many bars have you been behind? zero okay you so, a lot of bartenders. i've i've been behind more bars than i've actually been employed as bartenders at okay fair enough fair enough but i disagree with a lot of what you said and it has to do with a lot of it has to do with connecting with bartenders but really all of it has to do with connecting with people well yeah and between the two of us you should be better at connecting with people than i am but somehow i connected with these guys at the honeywell better than you did so well, there. What's, what's that based off of um, the fact that I got a metal straw and you fucking didn't. <laughs> no, you said that I should be better at, at connecting to people. Um, <laughs> boy. This is spectrum issue, I feel like. It might be. 
Yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. You know, also, they're people positions. Um, and that's why I feel like I actually believe it deserves a full podcast in how to, because when you're in a place like New York, and it was tough for me because I'll just, I'll share some of my story. I lived in upstate New York and I worked in a gym, 24 hour gym. And I went to a lot of the bars and clubs in New York. And I realized that a lot of the people, a lot of the bouncers of the bars and clubs uh, were regulars at the gym. Obviously they're-, they're That's not they're surprising. Big, they're big dudes and they have off hours. And I worked crazy hours at the gym. And even when I wasn't working, I, I hung oh, around. Oh, this makes sense. I hung around the gym, yeah. So I met a lot of these guys. Now, I realized that I could give a free protein shake to these guys here or there. Or if they got three protein drinks, one for them and two of their friends, I could give them one free. And uh, when I went out, they would just let me in for free. And they would let me and my friends in for free, which was not like I didn't take advantage and bring, you know, three, five, eight, 12 people. I would bring two people, maybe three people. But we developed a great respect for each other. And uh, I spent a, a few years in upstate New York where I got to go to the coolest places and I got escorted in, which was also very cool. Um, and then I got introduced to the bartenders where I never had to pay for drinks, which is also wild because that was the only thing I knew from 19 to 22 or 23. You go, you meet people you get introduced to people, you don't pay anything, and you have a great time. And then you take care of these people where you can. And then when we moved to South Carolina, I learned that I was nobody there. We're going to places where nobody knows me. I don't know anybody. And meeting people is very tough because I stood out. I didn't have a Southern accent. I was a bit of a ball buster. I was loud and bombastic. So then when I moved to New York City, and I started hitting the same places on a pretty regular basis. I, I, I followed some tactics that I had previously employed and I learned a bit how to be more of a regular at places, get to know people, get to know staff, get to know patrons. And um, I feel like I could almost create a recipe for it that could be deployable by pretty much anyone. Regardless kind of, of what age, I've been talking about. Re regardless of gender, regardless of looks, I feel like I have a pretty good recipe. I don't want to talk about it more now because I feel like we'd go way deeper on it. You know what? Let's save this entire topic. Yeah. I'm really just trying to lord over you the fact that I got a metal straw from Honeywell in my first time there, not even asking for it. I didn't expect anything. I just had a good time. And then they approached me and offered it to me. Right. Why? Because I know my shit about bartending. Thank you. There's enough shit in my face. All right. Let's hit the election. I'm looking at uh, 192 on Biden and 114 on Trump. But I'm looking at 209 to 118. But we're missing about 50% of the states right now. Dude, so. we're missing a lot. Yeah, and it's 11, it's, it, it's 11.22. So if you're uh -huh. watching this after the fact, wild. If you're watching right now and you do not subscribe to our YouTube channel, fuck you guys. Actually, I love you guys. I love the fact you're watching live. Very cool. Thank you for that. However, you got to hit the YouTube. You got to hit the YouTube. You have to hit the YouTube. Log off, subscribe on YouTube. Justin DiGiulio or Sip Talk, come back online and give me a wave or something, and uh, I'll shout you out. And uh, if I can reverse send you the gifts, will you do the gift thing? I don't, I don't know what an electronic gift is. I'll try to do it. I'll try to do it for you. Uh, just comment. Let me know you are subscribed. Some of you guys know. Yeah, let me just read this comment real quick. All right. Um, this is from 538. One more comment about the Electoral College. One possible outcome for tonight is that Biden could win the Electoral College relatively narrowly, yeah. despite a fairly solid win in the popular vote. This is just one of the many possible outcomes, of course. The Electoral College has tr traditionally done the opposite in exaggerated narrow outcomes. For example, turning a 51% victory for Reagan into a 1980 red map. 
this change in its function shows how institutions can change even when nothing about the formal rules of the games have been altered. Um, so right now, I'm still, my political futures are down again. So that's, that's where I place most of them. Down is in the website, it's not working. Yes. I'm not talking about what the, what the actual futures are right. saying. I don't know what the futures are saying because the website's down. Um, wow. Looking at the New York Times map, we're at 209 to 118 with North Carolina right now at 95% and 50% Trump, 48.7% Biden. So North Carolina is now leaning Trump. Well, I'm, Florida. I'm curious, why are we pushing so hard to, to solve this tonight? Um, well, because that's... Thank you, Mina. Thank you, Mina. That's a, that's a great question, and the answer is we really shouldn't be because realistically, these results are probably going to take, I would guess, four to seven days to really solidify. I think so, too. Because, think so too. But you know what? We got to entertain people, and talking about stuff in real time is much more entertaining than saying, Oh, who the fuck knows? We'll talk about it in a week. I just realized that I can feel all this tequila right now. Uh, that's not surprising. Yeah, no, I could, I could totally, uh, yeah, it's, it's hit me. It's hit me. It definitely hit me. Um, thank you motherfuckers for, for, uh, for making that happen. Um, we're still, uh, at a dozen we're at, you know, we got 20 people live. Um, which is the lowest we've been in a long time. Yeah, we but we're also in hour question. four. I think that hour four. Really? <laughs> um, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock. Okay, well, uh, yeah, here we are. Thank you, Lisa, by the way. Um, I think the most accuracy it should take is a week. Um, yeah. I think uh, I think the end of this week, really. But I'm curious what happens tonight. Um, and I have not seen I have not seen Trump or Biden. Biden wins in Arizona. Solid or no? Um, pretty solid. Cheryl, I am liking my blue margaritas. Thank you finally for the comment. I haven't seen a comment from you in a while. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, thank you, Rissa. Miss Ramnarine. Miss Ramnarine, thank you. Uh, once we get off in the future, you make a comment. I get back to you. Shoot me a DM. I love you guys, by the way, that DM me. Uh, James always, you know, James is not a big social media guy, so I always have to fill, fill him in on, uh, on the comments. Uh, we got a Curti subscribe to YouTube. That's cool. Um, the YouTube is a big one to build because I feel like in terms of a podcast, uh, we need to build the YouTube subscribers. YouTube's great. We we need to start broadcasting live on on YouTube as well. Hmm. We can't. We need the one one thousand. OBS. Well, yeah, but we need the one thousand. Yeah, we'll do OBS soon. I just I need somebody to, who's smarter than me to show me how to do it. If that you, shouldn't be hard to find. If you're in New York and uh, oh now I see the candles. Oh yeah, you can see the candles. There, here they are. If you guys are in New York, you know somebody in New York. Who can show me how to do OBS? I would love it. Uh, I got some of the Gary V guys uh, I correspond with, but they're so busy, so um, it's tough to to really hit these guys and, and tell them I need some help for free. So uh, I do know that after all these drinks, my seven hand meeting is going to be brutal. Lisa Lagoff, you get a seven a.m. meeting. Email your 7 a.m. Tell them you're worried about the protests. Um, there's, I, have, I, have no, I have no notifications of protests yet, so uh, I don't think shit's going on. Not yet. Eh, just give it time. Yeah. I, I, well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I think, I think tomorrow may be bad. I think the rest of this week may get worse. I think that's Might be, yeah. I think that's how protests work is they actually get worse and worse. So, you know, uh, New Hampshire called for Biden. Okay, all right. I got to move these beers to uh, the refrigerator because they've been sitting in that fucking freezer. Yeah, you don't want to have them blow up on you. Blow 
blow up. But when I open them, I think they're probably just going to uh, crystallize and freeze. So, well, you don't want that either. Uh, get some coconut water. No, maybe tomorrow morning. Ooh, maybe, coconut I, water tastes terrible. I like coconut water. Yeah. I like good. I like good coconut water. Have you had good coconut water? I, I'm not aware that good coconut water exists. Next time we hang out, I will show you some good, good coconut water. There's shit coconut water, like sugar added, like just same thing with orange juice. Um, but fresh squeezed orange juice is the best. Yes, of course, and and legit coconut water is like water with like a hint of flavor, but it's there's not this other bullshit in it. So you need it. You need it. A good brand coke. I can't remember. Coke, not Coca Vita. No, it's, it doesn't come in a box. A this box. is going to be a tough sell. I'm just telling you right now. I drink a, a lot of water out of a lot of coconuts, and I can tell you the brands that match up to it. All right, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Lisa, what kind of beer was that? Um, that was. That's your Icelandic beer. Einstack, the Icelandic beer. Maybe it'll hit me with a. You know, some type of affiliate marketing down the line. I gotta but look at. Gonna, I gotta look and see if uh, Total Wine South Carolina has Einstock. I want to try it. Great place, by the way. Is that off Ashley River Road? Yeah. Yeah, great place. Sixty-one and seven. Mm. Really great place. Uh, Harmless Harvest is the best. Oh yeah, Harmless Harvest. That's a that's a really good one. Coconut water. Um, Three six five at Whole Foods. That's a brand I'm still skeptical on. I'm not crazy about the Whole Foods uh, store brand. I love Whole Foods. Uh, I don't go to Whole Foods. The the store brand is definitely one I I haven't quite warmed up to. Um, yeah, I've had some bad products by them. So. Oh yeah, yeah. It's getting late. You motherfuckers staying up late, which is cool. It's cool to stay up late. You you are you are cool dudes, actually, all of you for staying up late, and I I appreciate that because. Uh, we don't usually, we don't usually go late. We don't usually start late, but we are here because we like you guys. We're here for you guys. We want to engage with you guys because obviously, like James and I are always talking about our different followers. Like we 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 talk about you guys offline a lot. We talk about what you guys add to the podcast offline, and we like tailoring what we're going to talk about as to what we're getting attention about in the current podcast. So, uh, you know, this po political thing is, is actually kind of taken off big. Um, the sexual harassment thing was like, remember sexual, James, remember sexual harassment was like, we were just having a conversation. Somebody started talking about sexual harassment and then we were like, let's talk in the next podcast about sexual harassment. And then the podcast after that was like sexual harassment 2.0. Well, yeah, we, so we had, like, one where we, like, touched on it, then Coco came on, and then we had, like, the, the lawyer and yeah, on for, like, we a went, podcast we went, on we, it. Yeah, I drank a lot of rum that night. Mm. My bad. We, uh, but we went deep on sexual harassment. Uh, and that was, a, that, was a good, that was a good one. What's that? Phrasing? <laughs> we went deep. <laughs> uh, together. Uh, consensually. Yeah, so not harassment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, but the aliens one is one I think we could do a lot. I really thought we would get into some ghosts before before how we didn't get there. I'm hanging here and I'm doing laundry. Uh, Carol, uh, Carol, you need a drink. Lisa, I appreciate you both going live so much so long. Uh, appreciate for the intense night. It was a good episode. Thank you guys. We are still live. Justin, night night, my bed is calling you. Look, my bed's calling me. It's a big bed. It's comfortable as fuck. It's the most expensive mattress I've ever bought. Uh, it's like a dream cloud or like a dream dream scene or a cloud vision. I don't know. It's a badass mattress. King size, which is big for Manhattan. And uh, it's comfortable as fuck. Like, I could, I could have like half my company or we could do a meeting in my bed. Everybody would be asleep. Huh. Uh, Twenty minutes in. That would um, be an awkward meeting. Yeah, yeah, but not for my company. <laughs> It'd be like weird, but normal. We're all close. Um, 
But I'm not going to bed, and you shouldn't either. Should pour a drink, one more drink, and, uh, and hang out. Um, so you guys who are not listening live, you're still on board. I don't know how many times you had to listen to us. Um, James, I listen to long podcasts. I, like, hit it on a workout. I'll do, like, 45 minutes. And then I obviously end the workout, take out the headphones. And then, like, I'll commute back to the house, and I do another, like, 12 minutes. And then, like, I'll, I'll go to the next place, and I'll do another 26 minutes. And then I go to work, and I do another 40 minutes on my commute. So all right. So I'm, I'll, I'm all for, like, the long-form podcast. I think that tonight calls for it, for sure. Georgia, Trump, Trump leading, 54-44. Ooh, that's, that's a 67 lot. in. 67% in. Oh, let me, let me Texas, Trump, 51-46. Yeah, looks like Texas is going to go Trump. Georgia is going to go Trump. I, I, uh, that's a pretty size. Where's lead. Florida? Where's Florida? Where's Florida? Florida hasn't really moved. It's still at what, like 90%, 90%. It's like 94% and roughly 51 48. Wow. We're just going hardcore counting ballots. I don't think we're going to have a full resolution of this for another, as I said, like four to seven days. Well, we, at what point is Trump going to come out and declare a victory? Probably tonight because that's what he does. Sure. When? Um, we were wow. staying between 10 and midnight, and it's 11.35 Eastern time. He might not actually declare it. I don't know. That's a really good question, and it's asking what's Trump going to do, which is a fundamentally chaotic proposition. Uh, hang tight. Can you stay in there real quick? Yeah, man. What you got to do? Uh, I got to pour another drink. I got to grab the bottle that's over there. I'll be right back. All right. Yes. Yeah, so all right. Um, so – I mean, basically what I'm looking at here across all my different platforms. And so well, the political futures right now, my most recent update is Trump 68, Biden 37. And if we look at the, the election map, we're not going to talk about Florida. Georgia's almost certainly going to be going Trump. North Carolina is probably going to go in Trump, but it's close. Pennsylvania's up in the air. Which, uh, Wisconsin and Michigan are toss-ups right now. They just haven't been able to report enough yet. Arizona's already been called for Biden. Um, this is – I got to say, I was really hoping that this was just going to be a landslide for Biden so that way we could just kind of be free of the uncertainty – and be able to to move towards a, a more unified political future. But that's absolutely not what we're heading to right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if where we are right now doesn't end up in the courts to some degree or another. I would bet that Pennsylvania is going to end up in the courts for their absentees and I don't, I don't remember what the election laws are in, in Wisconsin and Michigan, but it's just, boy, this is really tough because, as I said, I'm, I am not a Trump fan at all, and the idea of completely uprooting myself and moving to fucking Granada while it's, it's romantic and everything like that, uh, there's a lot of logistical hurdles. In, in I'll buy you a place in DR, all right? If you want to do DR, you and David, I will buy you a place in DR. Uh, But yeah, man. Um, All right. Looks like I, I just can't take another four years of this. There's just, there's no way. <laughs> I, I will say, I, and I don't like to get too political. My biggest issue with Donald Trump is the divisiveness of the nation. Thank you, Cheryl. 
Um, you need to come live with us. You can, open door. This apartment, by the way, this apartment with a nice kitchen and uh, incredible living room, uh, large king size bedroom. There's a king size bed and a wardrobe and a dresser and a big, big, big. Yo, bathroom. while you talk about that, I need to hit the bathroom real quick. The bathroom. With a big, big, big uh, double closet is, uh, is uh, it's available. I'm actually renting it out. And if you need a two bed, I have another two bed, super cheap in this building. It's actually Corona pricing which is wild. So if you guys are interested in, uh, in renting an apartment in the Upper West Side, on the Upper West Side, uh, I got your ass uh, in this place to be. Um, I know I have a great deal, actually. And uh, we'll hook you up. Or if you know somebody who is, send me an email, introduce me to them, Justin at DiGiulio Group or Justin DiGiulio at Gmail. Either way, I'm here for you, I'll move in. Also, you guys can check out my uh, apartment tour. James, I ever told you to get an apartment tour on YouTube? Uh, no. Are, are you, you, if you, you search, an apartment tour of your own apartment? If you search NYC bachelor pad, I'm number one. Oh, well, I mean, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's kind of badass, right? Yeah, man. So, yeah, uh, me, as a, me as a New York City bachelor, number one on YouTube. Um, Justin, you still have beautiful tan from Tulum. Thank you, Evan. Uh, I use cocoa butter on a regular basis. Uh, and I tan well. So, James, you tan pretty good. Generally, yeah. I, I just don't spend too much time outdoors right now. Well, yeah, I mean, now you yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Justin, come to Antigua uh, in Bar Barbuda. Antigua and Bar Barbuda. Miss uh, Ramarin. Um, Campernibuleta and e. Jovoy. Uh, that was fast. Uh, well, James buy my fast. ticket and I'll come. And James is a fast person. Uh, what do you guys do for work? James is an accountant extraordinaire, professional referee, professional bartender. Let's just focus on the accounting for right now because that's the, that's the field that I'd be moving into. Philosopher extraordinaire. It's not, uh, there's not a lot of work in philosophy these days. There's not? Mm -mm. Yeah, I, I, you know, I guess so. Uh, I just thought you got to write a lot and then and then shoot yourself. And I don't mean you. I mean like uh, uh, you know what? Philosophers. Uh, I don't. You don't. You don't strike me as somebody. Honestly, you don't strike me. I, I don't mean it. Strike me as somebody who would shoot themselves. Like it just you know just like we know life pretty well. Like we know the ups and the downs. Like I don't think you're gonna shoot yourself in a down. Like it just doesn't make no, sense. No, no, no. If I if I'm gonna kill myself, I'm gonna do it in a much more dramatic and hilarious way. What, like when you're 80, you're just going to be like, I got to take a shit and just hang yourself? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about like, I want, if I'm going to die, I want it to make the news. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about taking people out with me. I'm just saying like, I want, if I'm going to commit suicide, I want it to be something that's so prodigiously stupid that people are going to talk about it for years. We're just like, uh, uh, leave what this guy did. Yeah, you're gonna kill yourself, guy. No, no, no. I, I'm not saying this is something I'm I want to do. Not, I absolutely I'm don't. Not, I'm not gonna kill myself. I'm a, I'm a funeral count, countor. Like, you know, I, I, uh, when I was young, uh, this is before you and I were like close, close friends. We were friends, but we were not close, close. I remember my father's funeral, and uh, I just remember the number of attendees being so overwhelming, like down the block downtown Troy, downtown Lansingburg. Um, so like, I'm not, I, you know, when it comes to like death, like suicide is not really an option. And um, like, and like the funeral attendees is of major importance. Um, so, all right. So my roommate was in the bathroom. So let me go hit that real quick. And then I want to talk about very quickly the topic of suicide because there's a philosophical implication here. Fair enough. All right. Um, philosophically aside, Thank you guys for joining us. If anything ever happened to me, you take that flight, you come to my funeral, and you send an invoice to my estate. Um, my estate would like to take care of you. This will be recorded, and uh, I'm glad you were here. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Thank you, guys. Uh, and thank you, all my friends, obviously. You guys are fucking incredible. Uh, and if we're loosely friends, thank you. Uh, but we are still here for the election, Pennsylvania. 56 Trump, wow, 56% Trump, 40 something, 43% Biden, uh, wow. 
I did not see that coming in Pennsylvania. Uh, that was fast, James. No, he James did not go to the bathroom. His roommate was in the bathroom. Uh, Justin, you have a beautiful tan from Tulum. Yes, still. Thank you. I thank you for the six or seven comments, Evan. Um, I do. I have great melanin. Um, you know, I think that's evidence of the woman I love. Woman, woman I love. Excuse me. Uh, you know, just in the veins. Uh, thank you, JL. One day, can we have a tour of your apartment? One day. Um, Evan, my apartment is on YouTube. If you go to YouTube and you search NYC bachelor, uh, bachelor pad or bachelor APT, you will find my apartment. Um, it's a badass apartment. It's just a generic one bed, but it's a cool place. So check it out. And like, like that it. video and connect, connect with James and I on, uh, on Sip Talk because- All right. So let's talk about Albert Camus. What is that? He's a French existential philosopher. Um, so he, his, pro, his, his most famous work is probably the myth of Sisyphus, which- Oh, syphilis. He's the guy you gotta do the, um, what's that? Uh, antibacterial, right? All right, moving on. Um, so for those who aren't familiar with the myth of Sisyphus from Greek mythology. Hold up. We just got banned. What? On YouTube. For what? I'm not sure. Uh, we just got banned, man. That's not cool. All right. If you guys are watching, we just got banned, motherfuckers. That's not cool. Why? I'm not sure. Somebody reported us. Live what? streaming band. Live streaming band. I swear to you. Look. But we're not even live streaming on YouTube right now, are we? Yeah, no, we were, we were live streaming. Oh. You, live stream is banned. Details. Click details. I'm going to. Ooh, live stream violated community guidelines and virtual items policy. Might have been the suicide talk. Oh. Number of violations, one. We submitted an appeal. That's a little weird. That's a little weird. Yeah, submit an appeal. All right, so myth of Sisyphus. So the Greek mythology, the, the, the story- <laughs> the guy who had syphilis, right? Yes, moving on. So the, uh, the story goes, there, there was a guy named Sisyphus in Greece and he felt that he was smarter than the gods. And so he tried to trick the gods. I don't remember exactly. I don't know the story perfectly, but basically he tried and tricked the gods. And he died and he was sent down to Hades. And while he was there, he managed to trick the God of Hades and he ends up getting sent back up to the living realm. While he's in the living realm, he dies again. And the gods say, you know what? Screw this guy. Like he tricked us not once, but twice. We need to come up with the worst possible punishment for this person to make an example of him. And so the, the punishment that came up with him for him was his task was he needed to roll a boulder up a hill. And if he was able to roll the boulder all the way to the top of the hill, his punishment was satisfied and he was basically free to like <laughs> live out the rest of his afterlife or whatever. Fair enough. Fair and enough. so th what the gods designed was that no matter what he did, every single time that he rolled the boulder up the hill, something would happen and he would slip and fall or whatever, but the boulder would always come back to the bottom of the hill. So he was basically tasked with this permanent, this permanent job of pushing the boulder up to the hill and never making it all the way and it would go back to the bottom and he would have to start again. And that's his punishment for eternity. To this day, Sisyphus is still trying to push the boulder up the hill. And he has not yet once succeeded. So when you hear of a Sisyphean like maybe, task. No, like maybe, maybe like the rock you could give him a hand. Uh, maybe, but the, the rock isn't dead yet, so he can't help. But the idea of a Sisyphean uh, task is one that patient. you're constantly yeah. working to do, but you're never able to complete. So in his work, The Myth of Sisyphus, Camus comes up with this idea of basically philosophy of absurdism. 
which is that life is, when you think about it, life is largely absurd. The things that we do every single day, day in, day out, when you really take a step back and look at them are absurd. And he opens the, the book by saying that the central question, not just in philosophy, but in life is the question of suicide, which is, is it okay to commit suicide? If the answer is yes, then you should just commit suicide, which Camus rejects. And he says, if you don't accept suicide, then all the other questions begin. So th basically the most important question is, is it worth living? And from there, everything else branches out. But is it worth living? The question really is, is it worth not living? That's it's the same question. No, it's not. Because there's zero worth in not living. Zero. And there's positive worth in, is it worth living? But when we were talking about suicide, all I could think about was Cambu because he says the most important question for every person on earth is, is suicide a viable choice? And his answer is no, that as absurd as life may get and continues to be, we still push onwards and we still search for meaning. We still keep trying and there's value there. Sure. Far, I, don't, I don't know my fucking Twitch is live yet, which is really a pain the fucking balls. Um, let's see what the political futures markets are saying right now. So my roommate had two really important um, comments to make about the election and Biden's messaging, which I remember one of the two of the comments that he gave me, which is that the economy is really important to pretty much every voter right now. And <laughs> Biden's messaging on the economy was basically coronavirus this, coronavirus that. He didn't really address the economy in concrete terms in the same way that Trump did, and that might cost him. I don't know if it will. Um, let's see. New York Times, let's give a little refresh here. Political futures markets website still down. New York Times is still at 209 to 118 with a whole bunch of question marks. Fox News coverage. I'm waiting for my ads to end so I can refresh my coverage. Looks like Fox News is off the air. Let me see. I'm getting a live speech from Mark Kelly in Arizona, which great, but that's not telling me what I want to see. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, the, the Caribbean might end up being a largely viable choice. I'm having major difficulty on the on the Twitch. Um, shit, what's the other one? Uh, TikTok. That's a shame. What happened with YouTube? Did you get an explanation? No, nothing. Uh, I gotta I gotta cancel this. I'm gonna see who wants to uh, first person. To FaceTime goes live. All right. Nine seven five four five seven five one five. The comment make sure you have a question. All right, so we got a we basically got somebody. I, I invited. I invited TikTok to go live. Um, it is what it is. Um, 
It's shitty. It's shitty, man. So we, get, we you know, we're live on uh, Instagram. Justin is so cute. He's so mad. TikTok banned him. I wonder why he's such a sweetheart. Uh, I don't know, Evan. You tell me why. You, you, you know, you're a controversial dude. Um, I appreciate you being both places, but uh, but you know, I don't like being banned. I'm a nice guy. Um, and I don't like having that shit happen. It's not cool. So, you know, we're just here to, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just going through various, my various sourcings for between Twitter, 538, New York Times, Fox News, Slate. Uh, I'm all over the place right now. And I think ultimately we can keep on spinning our wheels on this one, but we're not going to have an answer tonight. I don't think. No, I don't think we are either. Oh, I, I got some Twitch activity actually. Let me. Uh, oh, great! I love Twitch. Me, yeah, let me hit the Twitch again. What any, do we got on Twitch? Any, any, any. Uh, we got some bullshit. We got some bullshit. I'm gonna pause that. Uh, oh, she's cute. Um, uh, Midwest, uh, freaking Puerto Rican lady. Um, said hi to you. So that, that you know, welcome, James. That's cool. Very nice. Yeah. Um. Boom! Log in. That's a little weird. Uh. Let's show that. Let's show. Show. Mm. Well, I wish we had some more live. Like that. That's that's kind of the goal here. Um, we got a lot of negative feedback, which is which is wild. Like, what's the negative feedback on? Uh, mostly, fuck you, people. Like that's all. Of like what though? What are they saying? Hang on, so I lost it. Did Julio? Let's try right. Boom, boom, boom. I'll look and verify. Welcome back. Send me a six-digit code. Six digits. Oh come on. To my Gmail. All right, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll send me six more digits. Late. It's like Halloween. Twitch. Four, four. All right. We're about to be live on Twitch, which would be cool. Which would be very cool. Find last your sponsors. We're going to turn the live stream. Okay. All right, local media exports. Um, who's on? Let's do it. Justin's cute. He's man on TikTok. Justin is a great guy. James is sexy. All right, thank you guys. Thank you, James. Oh, always appreciate the compliments. All right, go live, go live, go live. Enable microphone. Twitch, ba ba ba. Enable camera, ba ba ba. Got it. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Oh, uh, sip. Talk. EP. Five one. The election. Select category, um, talk show podcast, live stream. Boom, boom, boom. There we are live on Twitch. Fuck TikTok. I love TikTok, but uh, rotate your phone to begin. All right, boom. Trump wins Ohio. Oh, shit, for real? 
Yep. That's us over here. Here we go. Uh, wild. Sip talk. Trunk. Wait, Ohio. I did not see Ohio coming, actually. Honestly, I did not see Ohio coming. I'm going to go back to Twitter, find some corn. Um, bop. That's Facebook. Bop, bop. Uh, dude, I don't even know what to do on that. Uh, hit the TikTok. Hit the Twitter. Dude, so if you are live, if you are live on uh, Twitch, we want to know about you. Like you're a new audience for us. We just signed up for Twitch. Right now we're talking about politics. James has had four or five, six shots. It's cool. It's very, very cool. But um, what I want to know is, holy shit, four dead out of 11 million. Enjoyed life under the bed, pussy. Yeah, all right. So... I don't know what's going on with the election. It's a vagina. So I don't even know what Twitter has. It's very confusing for me. And lots of bad general pictures here. Very nice. Um, oh, there's a new one. Wow, all right. Um, what I want to know is what's going on uh, election-wise. Um depending on where I go, I get different results, but it's looking, all right. So I'm just going to read. I, I think this sums it up in a, in a pretty concise manner from slate.com. I'm just going to read straight from their, their latest post at 1155. If you want some evidence that this is different from 2016 in some way at 1145 on election night, four years ago, Trump was leading the electoral college 254 to 209 and was a Pennsylvania away went away from the presidency. He was also leading Hillary Clinton 48.5 to 47 percent. Tonight at 11.45, Biden is leading the popular vote 49.9 to 48.4 and 55.5 to 54 million votes. Biden was leading according to AP's call at various states of 209 to 118 and many of the biggest cities in the, st in the states with much of the outstanding votes, such as Philadelphia and, and Detroit, places that heavily favor Democrats have not had much of the vote reported and may not have that vote reported for days because of the difficulties in the states with counting early ballots, which is all to say this is a close election, but it's not the same as 2016. It's still completely up in the air as to who will win the election, and if people are patient and allow the votes to be counted, we will know soon enough. And we know that Biden's national numbers are better than that of Clinton, who ended up winning the popular vote margin by 2.1 points four years ago. At a similar point in the evening, and it seems likely to improve when the remaining votes are finally counted. While the winner of the popular vote does not necessarily win the presidency in our system, winning by more in the popular vote correlates with doing better in the states that you need to win in order to win the electoral college and the presidency. Um. So it's all to say what we've been saying all fucking night, which is, we don't know. Yeah, no shit, we don't know. Um, and here we are. Here we are. Yep. Here we are speculating on bullshit, um, which is crazy. Now in hour five. You and I are speculating on, yeah, hour, hour five, midnight, midnight. You and I are speculating on bullshit, whereas... Like... What's the national uh, standpoint right now? Good question. Let me see. Uh, did Joe Biden win? No, Joe Biden didn't win. Nobody's won yet. Nobody's, Nobody's won. won right now. National vote is at 57,915 versus 56,199. Biden versus Trump. So One Biden more. has 49,9 versus 48,4 for Trump. So Biden's leading in the national popular vote, but as we know, that doesn't matter. You said popular vote doesn't matter. Thank you, Tic Tac, for being back online. Thank you, Tic Tac. I appreciate that. I need your comments. I need to know what you're thinking. The Thelmark, Martina Gozere, Maritza Gozere, uh, Marisol. All you guys, come on. Don't fuck with me. We're here. James and I are here. 
Uh, we want to know what you're thinking. I'm about to eat my frozen cherry. Look at that. I got some goofy ass uh, Twitter. I love, you know, I like Instagram. I like TikTok. Twitch is cool. I like Twitch. Um, Twitter, there's no live feature. There's a lot of naked people. I don't need to see like dicks and shit. Like just going to fucking work in the morning. That's not cool. Very weird. You know? I don't like it. James, can I ask you to carry uh, the podcast while I uh, go check on some of the other ones? Um, yeah, just give me something to give me a starting off point. Let's let's uh, do a recap on the in, important states. You got all that at your fingertips. I you do. Talk, you got to talk. You got to talk. You got to talk. You got to talk. You got seven on Instagram. You got twenty-seven on uh, Twitch, and you got another five, eight on uh, TikTok. So you guys got to listen, listen up. James got a recap. James got. All right. So what I'm seeing right now across everything is that we got largely inconclusive results. Right now, if I were to have to place a bet, we got Florida and North Carolina going for Trump. Um, Ohio also going for Trump. Pennsylvania is way, way too early right now, um, especially since they have such a large number of absentee ballots. It's looking like Texas is also going to be going for Trump. Arizona is probably going for Biden. Nevada, they're already thinking they're going to they're, – they're pushing towards Biden, but a lot of votes haven't been counted yet. Um, it's, it's really hard to say where things are going to go right now. Um, as, as me and Justin have been saying for quite some time, this is probably going to take a couple more days for this to really shake itself out. But what one thing that's really clear is that Biden's seven to ten percent national polling average was significantly overstated. And this is starting to feel like twenty sixteen again in in a lot of ways where Clinton was heavily favored in 2016 and narrowly lost the electoral college despite winning the popular vote. And that's definitely a circumstance that we could see recurring in 2020, but whether or not that happens again this year is really tough to say. Um, I'm seeing some news right now that, that Atlanta is not going to finish their count tonight. Um, and, and so Georgia overall, the, the vast majority of the population in Georgia is going to be in Atlanta. So Georgia is still up in the air right now. Trump is at 54 to 45, but Atlanta could definitely swing that pretty heavily one way or the other. Atlanta is a huge metropolitan area yeah, for any of those who haven't been there. Yeah. Atlanta is in, in a giant city, almost comparable to Manhattan. Much more spread out. Well, spread out, but population-wise, big. Pretty similar, yeah. And and um, demographically, way different than the rest of Georgia. Yeah. Um, Atlanta, Georgia population. The let me just see the uh, the like the metropolitan area is um, significantly smaller than New York. New York's between 18 and 20 million, if you count like the greater metropolitan area. Atlanta's about five. Well, yeah, million. yeah. But yeah. so that's still uh, big. Uh, New, York, New, York, New York, the state is under 20 million. New York City is, they say, under 8 million. But I mean, there's so right. many minorities and people that are not like getting counted and stuff. Um, I'm going to remake a uh, quick old fashioned over here. What are you drinking over there? If you guys are live and you're watching us, fuck you motherfuckers if you're not drinking. Uh, it's an election night. At the very least, you hit the refrigerator and you grab a fucking Coors Light. Come on. You owe us that. You you owe your nation that. And uh, if you're not willing to uh, to keep that over, you've got, you've got some issues. Um, and James and I have dedicated our evening to uh, to that. And we've dedicated our, our careers to uh, to you guys, so mm -hmm. so that's weird. 
Yeah, no, there's there's a ton going on right now, and um, let me see. I'm just gonna continue sourcing. What I want to know is if uh, our viewership wants to watch you have a shot. I already know the answer to this question. No, you don't know. Um, Lisa uh, is laughing. Lisa, Lisa, Carol, big viewers. They watch us very often. Um, should James have a shot or, uh, or what should we do? Um, and I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, Evan, that we've been out here all night uh, being retarded. Uh, you know, that sucks. That sucks. Uh, you're still live on Twitch, which is weird because I don't have any, uh, I don't have the results on Twitch. I can't see like any comments or anything. So it, that's weird. Um, but we are here. Uh, resume stream. Twitch it is. Uh, that's James and I. So thank you for being part. Thank you for taking part. That's us. Um, doing James. Yeah. We got a lot of live streams and it's very overwhelming. We got one, two, three, four, five live streams. This is very overwhelming on my part. What do you need so, from me? Uh, I just need you to make conversation. So I've had the election, bring in facts because you have more screens and you have access to a keyboard and a computer. I have access to you and our live viewers. Which, well, give me uh, some questions that I can directly investigate because ask him, like, I can look at these election maps or whatever and, and prognosticate as much as I want, but the, the data is kind of out there. And if you want some kind of insight or whatever, then you need to give me uh, a, a better and more clear direction as to where I need to go here. All right, so I'm going to hit some lights. I'm going to say, uh, Alexa, living room light off. Alexa, dining light off. Alexa, hallway lights off. Alexa. Looks like you got one out of the three. Yeah, well, no, I got some other ones. They're just, they're far away. So I'm going to hit the dining light. Um, but what I got to, what we got to talk about really is uh, kind of the depth of the election, where we are now, and the fact that it's it's late and we have no answer, we have no words, we have nothing from uh, from what really matters to us as uh, as a people, as a community. Because at the end of the day, like we are a community. Like I know people have different views, but we you know we all got to come together and like go to fucking work together. So yeah, but. I gotta go to work together tomorrow with people I like. I disagree on when it, when it comes to politics. So, probably... yeah, but there's a there's a difference between being able to work interpersonally with people because I can guarantee you that there's people in my office that disagree with me pol politically, but I, I I can still work with them just fine. But when it comes to the long term viability of our future political system, that's an entirely different question. Sure. Well, I think our current political system is, is set to not last very long uh, moving forward. I would agree. Yeah, and I, 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 mean, I, I truly feel that. I feel the division. We're right. on an unsustainable path. And I, agree. So I remember the 2000 election. That before Kerry and Bush, right? That was 2004. 2000 was Bush Gore. So and I remember we, vote. we weren't able to vote in the 2000 election. We were freshmen in high school. And Hold I would up, say. Wait, 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 pause. We're going to talk about the 2000 election. We have actually an obnoxious amount of calls for you to have a shot. Well, then give me a second. I'm going to hit the bathroom and pour myself another shot. All right, fine. Then we'll talk about the 2000 election. Talk and, about so. And then we're going to talk about the 2004 election. 2000, yeah. But um, you know what you could do is while I'm I'm away from for a second, talk about your recollection of because I remember Mr. Parsons was our teacher. Yep. 
for for history during that time. So you can talk a little bit about the 2000 election while I'm away for a minute or two. So uh, it's crazy because I remember having, I remember being like in elementary school during the Clinton election where my teacher was asking us, oh, who's voting for um, Ross Perot? And who's voting for Clinton? And who's voting for, maybe it was Bob Dole, I don't, I don't remember who. What was against Clinton, against Bush Sr.? Um, I had the internet in front of me, but I'm not gonna uh, get involved in that. I'm just gonna ask you guys. Uh, but I remember being in first grade or second grade or third grade, I think it was like second grade or maybe fourth grade, like tops fourth grade. Um, and I just remember this super uncomfortable feeling where the teacher was asking us basically our politics, which was at a deeper rooted level, our parents' politics, because we were young as fuck. And I just remember being like, oh, I heard this at home. I'll share this in a classroom. And then I remember feeling minoritized. And the teacher said, you know, 13 people in the classroom say Clinton. Eight people in the classroom say this person, Bob Dole, whoever it was. Two people in the classroom say Ross Perot. And I was like, oh, wait, what do you, and what do I say? And I was like, uh, and I voted what my parents voted, what I heard at home. And I think it was the Republican candidate. I think, I don't remember. But I remember feeling so ostracized. I remember, I remember at the end of the day, it was one person that voted independent party. Uh, Eric, uh, Eric, uh, some of the D. Uh, James, you remember Eric from, from elementary school? Eric, some of the D? DeMarsh? DeMarsh, DeMarsh. Yeah. Eric DeMarsh voted Ross Perot, and the whole classroom was, was up in arms about Eric DeMarsh. Ross voted. Perot didn't run in 2000. I thought he was 96. 96. I'm talking about 96. Um, and just being just a wild, a wild time and place. And then the following, the following, um, election 2000, and that was the, the first George W. Bush and obviously voted against George W. Bush. I don't remember if I could vote that year, actually. No, you definitely couldn't. You were 14. Uh, no, I was, I was 16. I was 16. No, you were 15. 2000. Te prometo. You were 15. I was. And who was the guy? Uh, who it was, was Bush the... Gore. But... Al Gore. Clinton's vice president. And that was that the year that An Inconvenient Truth debuted? No, Inconvenient Truth came out in like 2004. Okay, yeah, yeah. So Al Gore. Oh, real quick. What, yo, real quick. What are we on on Twitch? What's the uh, the handle? I don't know. How are we broadcasting on Twitch if you don't know what the handle is? Uh, it's all sideways and shit. And uh, all, this is this is new for us. We are on Twitch. Uh, the, the, handle, the handle is uh, there's no comments, no chat, no joins. I fucked something up. Says one viewer. I think that's me. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna end that stream. We'll be back. I'm gonna delete it. Dude, I don't know this shit. Well, we'll sort it out in editing. Anyways, so yeah, Bush Gore. That ended up with the Supreme Court case because it ended up going to a recount in Florida. And Florida was going to be the hinge state, which determined whether or not Bush or Gore won the election. And the Supreme Court stepped in and stopped the recount. And that was what ended the election. And there's a non-zero possibility that we might be in for a Bush v. Gore 2.0 of Biden versus Trump going to the Supreme Court about... We are very likely to. I think we're super likely to. I wouldn't bet against it. No, who the fuck would? So, 
Oh, fuck. We lost our live stream here. Uh, my roommate wants to know where, the, where we can watch the uh, the podcast. Give me a link or something that I can send to him. YouTube. YouTube. YouTube set talk? Yeah, YouTube, obviously, yeah. Yeah, let me see what I can do. I'm not seeing it live on YouTube right now. Well, we're not on YouTube right now because we're kind of fucked. What are we getting in the comments right now? Let, let's respond to some uh, some of the users. Well, right now everything is canceled, actually. So we're just it's just you and me. Well, we're kind of fucked, actually. Um, the their live video is canceled across a few platforms. As would be expected in hour five. Yeah. Oh. Hold up. I'm trying. I'm trying here. No, you're good. I actually thought we'd be able to, to, to pull off this live like uh sorry. Yeah, it's crazy that, that this shit like doesn't uh like pull. Check the connection. I think we're live on uh, Instagram again. That's us live on Instagram. Um, the TikTok. Hey, thanks, Matt. Hilarious. Uh, thank you, Cubby. Um, yes, we're live on TikTok. We're live on. Uh, uh, we got Carol back. Thank you, Carol. Evan and Hollywood. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad you're both back. Um, so we got the OGs back. Um, so what controversial shit you want to say? What controversial be shit do I want to say? Lisa's back, so be careful. Be careful. We got our OGs back. Don't say anything insulting. No, I wasn't going to, but he said right. there's a difference between controversial and insulting. I want to know the fucking election results. All right, dickhead. Come on, where are we? It's late. We're at 213 versus 136, Biden versus Trump, but... Bro, hit Fox. There's a tremendous amount of uncertainty here. I'm, I'm still going to call Florida for Trump, and probably Dude, North Carolina Fox. for Trump. You've got to hit Fox. Um, pull my phone out right now. I'm on okay. ABC News, which I don't. Uh, know. this Twitch shit is bullshit. All right, I'm on Fox shit. News right now. Fox News has Biden two twenty seven, Trump two ten. With here, here are the states that still remain to be determined according to Fox News, which I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually trust. Georgia up in the air, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Nevada up in the air. Fine. All um, right, look, so we, uh, we actually got back uh, live. We got TikTok. So, um, that's a cool spot. Mis amigos in TikTok, gracias para, uh, how you say to be friends with me? Amigos? No importa. Um, my friends on TikTok. Mis amigos de much. TikTok. Mis amigos de TikTok, gracias muchos. Um, Es para mí muy importante que estamos juntos. Um, so, uh, hablamos ahorita de 
election and uh, y más. So, about the election, we're talking about que estates. Uh, que... Jornimo. Cuanto estamos por, por la elección y realmente quién sabe. Right now we got we got 20, 26 people right now uh, in vivo. So uh, tell me about the different states. Well, according to Fox, Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Nevada are up in the air. When I'm looking at the New York Times tracker, if I look at those states, Georgia, I don't know. Um, there's still 20% remaining to be counted. Right now, Trump is up 53 to 46, but apparently a lot of those votes are in Atlanta, so who knows? North Carolina, Trump is up 50 to 49, and that's another one where who knows? Pennsylvania, same thing. Absentee ballots are going to really complicate the issue there. Michigan. Trump is up 54 to 44, but only 53% of the votes have been counted. If I click into the actual districts, there's a ton of stuff that's uncounted. Um, let me look at Wisconsin. Wisconsin, similar story. If I look at Minnesota. Dude, I'm about to collapse on the fucking floor. It's way too much. Iowa is pretty strict. There's a Iowa is super strong like Trump. Um, let me look at Wisconsin. Wisconsin, similar story. If I look at yeah, so Iowa is going to be a really similar story. Texas has already been called for Trump. Arizona is going to be going for Biden. Nevada is going to be – it's too early to tell. I'm only getting 1% in here right now, so we can't even begin. So we're just going to go with the uh, the same old story, which is uh, it, it's too early to call, and, 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 and really, who the fuck knows? Um the Senate. All right, what should, what should we do? Should we? Uh... I, I I'd say we put a bowl in it for tonight, and we talk about it on Thursday. You lost that whole time. Kudos to you. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully, <laughs> uh, he had a drink along with us because that was was quite the show. Uh, but I appreciate you guys being there. Uh, appreciate you guys following, and I appreciate the support. We'll see you guys soon. I like PBR. I just got priced out of it.